Where are they? Good Mr. Junior. Mr. Junior. Junior is here. All right, I see Mr. Matthews Jr. and good morning, Mr. Sharp. Uh, and then Mr. Nichols, Mr. Harvey, Miss Westmoreland. Good morning. All right. And then Mr. Ryan and Misty Williams. Good morning. And then. Uh, See Mr. Smith, Miss uh, Hilton, Mr. Atkins, and Mr. Brown. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So our name and roll are jurors present. Yes, sir. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Um, before we go ahead and bring out our jurors, I will acknowledge Mr. Harvey. Uh, your email to us in regards to your continuing objection to um, uh, Investigator Belknap, and there's Archley and Bennett, A.C. Booker Higgins, Officer Ashley Davis, Leonard Pass, Adrian Bean, and Courtney Bean. Can you speak up, sir? Yes. Use the microphone. Sure. Sorry. That's okay. Um, not inv investigator Belknap. He's already on the stand. We've already gone through it with him. So that procedure is already um, already done. But as far as the witnesses that are coming up that we were noticed by the district attorney's office, I have those specific objections to those witnesses that are coming up. And I guess we can take them up whenever the witnesses appear. I just didn't want to waive that issue. All right. Well, let's get through um, Investigator Belknap, and then we can take them up as necessary. But you'll need to remind me again, OK? And I'll mark your emails the next court exhibit in order. Thank you. All right. Um, In regards to juror 204, uh, Ms. Weaver was able to pull uh, the transcript reference in terms of our examination of her. Um, the issue of her potential move was only brought forward when we told her that, hey, you have to come back and participate in jury selection. There were no other conversations prior to that, and, and uh, I did note that if it came up that she should bring that to our attention. So she did mention that, Mr. Steele, you did not object as to it. Uh, so the record will stand what it stand as it stands in that respect. Um, but I still need to answer the question. So have you all pondered the issue? I don't think it'll become ripe until she actually, the date she's supposed to take a release. But I want to go ahead and at least take care of it. Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. Um, Your Honor, of course, I bow to the record. I live and die with the record. I understand that. Um, I have in my notes about the juror telling us that she was moving, and I have in my notes that I made a four-cause motion. That was that was on the basis late earlier. She told us about the move. After we, during the second part, when we started calling people back saying, or when we told her at the end, like, hey, we're going to go ahead and, um, we're going to go ahead and, um, call you back for jury selection. Um, if I, from taking a look at the transcript, Mr. Jimenez did all the, most of the, Jimenez, I should say, most of the objections in regards to her. You adopted whatever it is he said. Okay. Well, that's what the record says. I'm, I'm with the record. Okay. I just. All right. Okay, but I'm just. My in terms of, in terms of, I got to deal with the issue at this point in time. So, our position, and I've spoken to um, everyone representing um, an accused here, is um, we we are not waiving the issue. We are not waiving the appellate issue, like I said yesterday, and. Um, I'm looking for cases, and I can't seem to find them. I don't, I don't see any either. I mean, a juror, what I'm trying to do is a juror is qualified, gets sworn during trial, becomes a convicted felon. That becomes notice to the court. 
what happens, everything I'm finding is the lawyer didn't do what we're doing, and it's waived. Yeah, but it's not waived in right. this particular circumstance. There's, there's independent evidence on the record as well as we, as well as she's already told us. So, so our position is we, we don't want to waive anything. I know you, it's not waived. I, I, well, I don't believe it's waived. We're not waiving, and um, and we are moving to excuse the juror for cause. But you asked for a specific case law, and I cannot give you a case. Every one of the cases, I could give you a case I found, but every one of the, or we found, but every one of the cases, they never get to the issue because they say it was raised after verdict, after guilt. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but my, the court's concern is, is she still qualified? Because she's not a resident of Fulton County, which would be a disqualifier under Title 15, um, I believe, uh, or the before trial or before we actually impanel our jury. Right. And then the way I always, I mean, as the court knows before, like appellate arguments, it's always like these hypotheticals, which are very simple, but very far out. What if all our jurors moved to the state of Kentucky, but they all said, no problem, we'll, we'll just keep coming every day. Is that a juror? Is that a jury of the peers under the Constitution and statute? And my position is, our position is that under statute, um, we are asking for that juror, I think it's 204, to be removed based upon the evidence in the record that she will no longer be a Fulton County resident, which if we go by the statute, that is a disqualifier. It would have disqualified her, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree with your, with your analysis at this point. I believe that, I mean, I'm just in the abundance of caution. I probably want to ask her, is it your intent to move? Um, actually on this date and are you making plans to get a driver's license, change your boat, the things that would ordinarily do that. Because as we know, you can have multiple yes. domiciles, um, but whether or not you're a resident, she may still consider herself a resident of Fulton, but if she's going to move to the county that she's in, which I believe is, I'll take a look at the lease again. but. Um, we, uh, that would be that would be the what I would probably do, and uh, just for some more data points for the record. All right, well, thank you, sir. Right, thank you, Ms. Hill. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the state's position is that right now she's still a qualified juror, and I believe until when? I believe you said the lease starts on February twenty seventh. Fourth or twenty seventh? Yes, ma'am. So, I'm going to check in just a second. So, so we would just ask that. It will become riper probably towards the end of next week. And so we could have some moments to see if we find any additional case law, but by next Friday, we should have whatever research that we'll have, and it'll be riper at that time since her lease does not begin until the 27th, Carolina. But at this juncture, she still is a qualified juror for us to move forward proceedings oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, until um, next Friday, Your Honor. Ms. Weaver, can I see the lease, please? Thank you.
Her lease actually starts on the 26th of February, so that's a Monday. So let me do this. Let's go ahead and get some data points from her about this move. We put that on the record, and then that will be. Um, I'll leave it open. I'll leave it open just a little bit longer to see if we can find any case law on the issue. But um, I've taken a look as well, and I. My cons like I said, my, the court's concern is whether or not she's still a qualified juror, and the fact that she's not even that she will not be qualified when a verdict would be rendered. So that's. That's the issue. Um, all right, bring out 204 if you wouldn't mind, Sergeant Ingram, please. Bless you. Juror 204, come on up and just have a seat. You have a seat in the front row of the no you go the front row of the jury the jury box and then pull the microphone down councils um please be seated does it work all right you pull it down so you can talk with us all right is the, is the um is the handheld mic working okay you want to give us a mic check <laughs> okay, all right. All right, never mind. It's not working. You can? Okay. Nobody else is hearing it. Okay, all right. Because it's all about you. I understand that, Miss Weaver. Yeah, um, Drew 204, come on with the witness stand so everybody can hear you, okay? Yeah, they're not going to film our juror, please. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, juror 204, uh, good morning, madam. Good morning. All right, so that eventuality that you uh, prepared us for is actually coming to pass. Um, we have uh, a copy of your lease. I am going to seal it for purpose of record so nobody will know where, where, it is, where it is exactly you're moving to, but it, it's from, and I've discussed this with counsel, you are... The 26th of February is when your lease takes effect? Yes, sir. Okay, and what county is the address that you've given us um, where you're moving to? Uh, Cherokee. Okay, is it your intent to become a resident of Cherokee County uh, on or about the 26th of, of February? Uh, yes, sir. All right, have you, have you taken any steps to get a, to, to change your driver's license, register to vote? Um, what are your plans? in that respect? Well, once we moved over there, I was going to change my address for uh, work and so I can get a new ID and then change my uh, voter stuff so I know what precinct to go to. Okay. All right. So it's your intent to no longer be a Fulton County resident at that point. Is that... Is that yes, sir. Is that, is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And I believe that you told us you were moving uh, from, uh, if memory serves me correctly, from my notes that because your grandma's lease was up at that point is that right yeah okay all right anything else you want to tell us about the lease or, or no tell us about your your desire to move or anything i haven't asked you yes. 
just expensive over here. It's expensive in Florida? <laughs> it's expensive with anywhere these days, but um, okay. All right, well, I um, we're still mulling over, you know, what we're, what's going to happen, and um, I can assure you before next Friday I'll give you a decision, okay? Yes, sir. But I want you to know that we are, we have considered it, and everybody's pondering it at this point in time. So, okay? Yes, sir. All right, okay. Anything? No. Okay, all right. Madam, just go ahead and step back in the headquarters. We'll call you all out in just a minute, okay? Yes, sir. All right, all rise for our juror. All right, please be seated. All right, anything else I need to take up before we call for our jurors? As Detective, uh, I should say, Detective Investigator Belknap, is he outside? He is, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Your Honor, we just had one brief... Can we go ahead and get him started? All right. What's the, what's the one tell me? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, we just, the state would like to bring to the court's attention, um, we've noticed last week in questioning of Investigator Belknap that um, Mr. Steele has consistently ask questions which are assuming facts not in evidence and it happened multiple times we object we would object and then it would continue to happen and so your honor the state has some concerns that if this line of questioning continues we will be forced to continue interrupting Mr. Steele before he finishes his questions if that line of testifying and assuming facts not in evidence. And so we want to bring this to the court's attention so that we can be able to handle this and move forward um, in an expeditious manner. But it has been improper. It continues to happen. We have several examples of it. And so we are just trying to bring this to the court's attention so we can move forward and not interrupt Mr. Steele. But if this line of question continues, we will interrupt prior to the questioning being completed so that these questions will not keep on being propounded in front of the jury, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I'll let Mr. Steele respond, but... Um... But certainly it's your right to object, and certainly, um, but Mr. Steele, anything? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. We'll just take it up as an as-needed basis. All right, can we summon uh, Dete uh, Detective Bell now, please? Summon our jurors, please. Okay. Please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. Ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. Good morning. All right. You know, though, there's a saying that in literature, and I believe it's attributed to um, Shakespeare originally, the best laid plans of mice and men. So, but I think that another... Uh, author uh, actually uh, stole it from him and put it in their work. But anyways, um, 
We had planned on coming back on on uh, on, on Tuesday, or I should say on Monday uh, after the after the holiday, after the after your long weekend. Um, as would happen, uh, one of our members uh, tested positive for COVID, so we had to could be down a few days because of that. So that's the reason why you got the extended break, and then we still had to take up the issues that we couldn't take up. So um, that's that's why the delay, and just wanted you to know in all, um, all um, candor. To that end, remember all the things I told you about staying healthy. Um, to that end, I have caused this particular courtroom, your jury headquarters, and uh, the like to be the surrounding areas to be um, sanitized specifically for that for that particular reason. I will continue to do so. But the other things that go along with you know health at this point in time are still important so I would caution you advise you and just make sure that you are using the best practices you can to stay as healthy as you can and for some of you that are wearing masks you're, that's totally acceptable and uh, you're welcome to do so at any time and you, 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 you see fit okay alright so that's all I have for you and we're going to continue at this point in time with the examination of uh, investigator belt now so, so you're still under oath okay yes sir alright <clears throat> Mr. Steele, come on. <clears throat> Free me, Jim, whenever you're ready. Thank you, sir. Display with Mr. Kokomo, um, Mr. Williams, number 70 is already in evidence. Defendant Williams, number 70? That was your 170. Oh, 70. 70. Um, it has already been admitted, yes, it may be shown. Detective, um, I'm showing you uh, Mr. Williams' number 70, and I'm asking Mr. Kokomo if he can to focus in on the album cover or the mixtape cover. You see that? I do. And you remember talking about that last week before, right when we were leaving uh, court before the jury? I do. And um, in that, you recognize that there's an eagle, it's fair to say, skull of an eagle? Sure. And there's an a, a image of a snake going through the eye socket of an eagle. Is that fair to say? Yes. And when you looked at that, without any question posed, um, you made it known to me, and I asked you to make it known to the jurors, that that was um, gang paraphernalia or gang message. Remember all that? Uh, I don't believe that was consistent with my testimony. You didn't tell this jury last week that there's another item on Mr. Williams 70 that is gang related? Um, that is not consistent with what my testimony was. Well, is what is when you told me that hey on number seventy I'd like to talk about that image. Why did you do that? So my testimony was that this was of note to I and other investigators at the time when this album was released, and the reason for that was not because we were trying to use it to get Mr. Williams. We were concerned that this imagery would be recognized by rivals as something insulting to them and they stoked the violence in the gang war that at that point we had been investigating for almost three years. So at that time it was of note to us um, along with similar imagery that we saw both from other members of YSL and rivals on the other side making similar imagery in reverse. The jurors will recall what you said but do you deny telling the jurors that you believed that that was done for a gang message? 
again, my testimony was specifically that this was of note to us as investigators um, for the potential message that it was going to send to rivals and the potential to reignite a gang war that had been going on for quite some time at this point. Now, you realized at the time of telling the jurors on that album cover, a mixtape cover, you realized that future, his symbol is an eagle, right? I'm familiar with the Free Band's logo, yes. And it's an eagle, right? It is. And are you familiar with Jeffrey Williams and Future doing other mixed tape releases? Objection, Ron. Assume the thing's not. Assume, objection. I'm asking, I'm not assuming anything. Are you familiar with Mr. Williams and Future doing other mixed tape albums, is the question, sir. That's, I'm not assuming anything in evidence. I am familiar with them doing other work together, yes. I couldn't even. Okay, you said yes. Okay, and are you familiar um, with the artwork on other mixed tapes of Mr. Williams and Future? I'm not. Did you ever bother to look at whether on other mixed tapes there is a snake and an eagle on the covers. You know, we, we weren't investigating album covers as crimes. Um, again, we were concerned about the imagery on this album cover when we saw it because of its potential to be perceived a certain way by their enemies and its potential in our minds um, of, of uh, leading to violence that we would then have to investigate. So, do you have any evidence to tell this jury that Jeffrey Williams had any, any authority or input into that album cover that signs Mr. Williams number seven? Well, again, we did not investigate an album cover. So, what is the answer? That my, my question is different. Do you have any evidence today, any day, that Mr. Williams had any involvement, authority, input into the album cover that's shown on the screen, Mr. Williams number 70. No, and as I've said, we were not investigating the album cover or Mr. Williams' relationship with the album cover. We were investigating its possibility um, to inspire violence from rivals who may have seen in it what we were concerned may have been in it. So you look at Mr. Williams number 70, what's on the screen, that artwork, and what you get out of it is that can somehow stoke a, a gang violence. That's what I hear you say. Is that true? That is not consistent with my testimony that it was of note to us as investigators um, who I think would not be doing our duty if we didn't see that and prepare ourselves to interdict or mitigate potential gang violence um, in response to, to this image. Especially given context outside of this, of what we saw um, after this from rival gang members and even other members of YSL using this same imagery in their own posts. So you take, without any evidence, you take this artwork and somehow you put Mr. Williams involved with this artwork, stoking whatever your word was, Gang violence. Objection on this characterization of the testimony. I stand by Without any information that Mr. Williams is at all involved with even thinking about, thinking about some gang or YSL as a gang, that's what you focused on when you saw the album cover. Objection. Counsel speculating, testifying, and mischaracterization of the evidence. I stand objection. Is that... When you look at this without any input, any evidence, anything, anything objective that Mr. Williams objection, had... Objection, you have to Same objection. Mr. With, Steele, don't testify, please. Without any information that Mr. Williams had any input in Mr. Williams' number seven, the album cover, objection, the mixtape cover. Mischaracterization is speculation. It is speculation, Mr. Steele. A standing objection. Your view of this case comes from your vision, right? That's fair to say? I'm not even sure what that means. You understand this case the way your brain tells you to, right? Let's say everybody. I mean, in the sense that 
um, every thought that I have comes through my brain, sure, but uh, I was not the only person that investigated this case. Um, and a lot of the information from the case didn't only come from me or from my coworkers, but also from interviews with rival gang members, um, third parties not involved directly in the conflict, uh, members of the gang itself. Uh, we have quite a bit of information from victims and witnesses and all manner of people that were involved in all aspects of this investigation. But gang members and victims and witnesses part of this investigation, do any of them have any clue as to who birthed the artwork in Mr. Williams number 70 on Super Slimy Mixtape? Um, no, I didn't ask that question, but unfortunately it doesn't really matter who birthed it. Um, this image and its potential to lead to retaliatory violence was something we would have to deal with and mitigate, and so it was of note to us as investigators. But don't you understand from what you're saying, you are taking an object that has nothing to do with any YSL gang. Objection, Your Honor, that this characterization uh, counselors testifying. Do you find it problematic in your role as an investigator, a gang investigator, that you're taking a piece of Mr. Williams number 70, that image, and you are portraying it as somehow involving a gang? Does that bother you? Objection, Your Honor. It's not relevant, it bothers me. Yes, same question is the form. All right. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> is it fair to say that it didn't matter to you or your fellow investigators or the prosecution why or how the artwork was came out. Is that what you're saying? Objection, Your Honor. This characterization Sustained. has an answer at this point. All right. Let me ask you this. With regards to this album cover, except how you took it and how you perceived other gang members took it, you did no investigation into how that was created. Is that true? We had no reason to investigate how it was created, and so we did not. You stated that you have focused on Jeffrey for approximately 12 years. Is that fair to say you are co-workers? That is not at all what I've said. I thought you said you back to 2012. <clears throat> I may be wrong on the year, but something like that. Well, I, I've never said anything about our investigation focusing on, <clears throat> on Mr. Williams um, or, or for any period of time. You don't know, though, when he left Cleveland Avenue area, correct? Um, I don't know what you mean by when he left the Cleveland Avenue area. When he moved from that area. I don't, I don't know when he moved from Cleveland Avenue. You don't know when he moved outside of Atlanta, if at all, right? Uh, I know that he did for a time live outside of Atlanta. I did not track his moves um, or record dates of his moves. You never spoke with any type of expertise in African-American culture, right? That's, that's an answer, sir. You never... Uh, bothered to look into the culture of hip hop or rap or how a musician advertises themselves. Right? That's the same. You never looked at how a up and coming person or even a a recognized artist um, keeps interest and fan base, right? Um, no, sir. To the extent that that has nothing to do with a criminal investigation, no, absolutely not. Including social media posts to show the brand, in this case, Young Thug. You never did any type of investigation to see what fans wanted to see of the brand Young Thug, did you? Um, it was not of interest to us what his fans wanted to see, although I am familiar at this point in my career investigating gangs that gang members often do brand themselves around their gangs um, and participate in these types of promotions. And do innocent people also promote themselves 
as gang Objection. members to promote their improper question. That's the same question. All right. Lyrics to songs. You have no idea whether the lyric to a song was, in, in this case, Mr. Williams' songs. You have no idea how those lyrics came about, do you? Who wrote them, who suggested them, who, who modified them, if anyone? No, we had no part in the uh, creative process. Isn't it the duty of you and your co-workers and the prosecution, though, to find out the background of information that you're showing to the jury and you're telling about? Objection and apologize. Same question. You testified last week that you knew that some of the tweets that you testified to on direct examination with the prosecution, you knew them to be uh, lyrics from songs. Remember that? I believe I testified that I believed some of them to be lyrics from songs um, or that I didn't dispute your assertion that they were lyrics from songs. Okay. And you said that the reason you did not mention that on direct examination is because you were not asked. Do you remember that? Um, I don't recall that, but no, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have uh, made statements that I wasn't asked. Why wouldn't you correct and say this tweet may be or is from a song, even if not asked by the prosecution. Why wouldn't you tell the jurors? Well, I can't answer things that aren't asked by the prosecution under direct examination. On Mr. Williams number 70, I did not ask you about that image. You brought that up and said, there's anything else I want to say. Well, to, that? to your point, you, you brought this image up. I did not. The state did not. You brought this image up, and you asked for context around these images and around these tweets. Um, what I wanted to share with the jury was that it was of note to us when we saw this, given context outside of just what was happening on Twitter or on an album cover um, at that time. I don't believe that I said Mr. Williams' name. Uh, and... That was the extent of my testimony to this, given that context around this. When I was under direct examination, I wasn't asked to give context for any of the tweets that I read into the record. And to the extent that I would have been asked, it is not uncommon or unusual for someone to quote a lyric, a movie line, a poem, or anything else to express a sentiment. And using a song lyric for that doesn't change that that's how people use lyrics regardless. You testified about the hybrid gang YSL, remember that? I do. And you talked about in your initial appearance before this jury in November of 2023, the color red. Remember that with YSL? I did. And then when I came and, and noted all these different colors that Mr. Williams wears, including the color blue, you said, well, he can do that. Remember that? I don't think that's exactly the way that went, but uh, yes, I did certainly clarify the way that gangs represent their colors. You talked about that someone with YSL who's alleged blood affiliate, if it's a hybrid gang, would not like to use or would change the letter C. Remember that type of testimony? As, I mean, as rough as that translation of it is, yes. Okay. And yet, when I asked you about Jeffrey Williams' album covers, songs and albums, statements that he used at Let Us See, you said, well, he can do that. Remember that? I don't remember us discussing that. Well, that's true, right? I'm sorry, I wasn't finished with my answer. Uh, I don't remember discussing that, but like any other identifier you see with a the gang, um, there's not going to be 100% usage or non-usage of any given identifier. You said that generally this hybrid gang, YSL, allegedly, if it is a gang... Objection, Your Honor. That's the same question. Allegedly, if this hybrid supposed YSL gang, Objection, you test... Your Honor. You testified that they're blood affiliated and therefore their rival, I guess is your word, is Crips. Remember something like that? 
Again, that's a, probably a very rough translation of the testimony. I don't recall specifically what the questions and answers were. But something like that you explained to the jury. Remember that? I, again, I, yeah, I'm not going to say whether I testified to anything without knowing the context and what my actual answer was. But that's true, right? It is true generally that Bloods and Crips have a rivalry. However, uh, across the country, here, um, even in L.A. where these games originated, there are rivalries between Crip gangs. There are rivalries between Blood gangs. Uh, sometimes there are alliances across the aisle uh, as well. So it's um, a generality. I would uh, believe that's what my testimony was. And, of course, that would be the, uh, the full picture. But you explained to the jurors that Sergio Kitchens, according to you, is identified with a Crip gang. Remember that? I do. And Martinez Arnold uh, goes by um, Duke. He is identified, according to you, as affiliating with a Crip gang. Remember that? Yes. But yet Jeffrey Williams, you explained, does musically, maybe, maybe personally, um, have friendships with Mr. Kitchens and Mr. Arnold. True? Yes. So again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't apply to Jeffrey, right? What doesn't apply to him? These rules that you're giving out, that's why it's a hybrid, right? That's what you explained to the jury. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the rules don't apply to him. Um, what I found in my experience and what the research has found across several decades is that gangs have rules, um, and as ardent as they may appear to be about their rules, some rules are loosely enforced. That's not just here, that's in Chicago. Um, some research out of Chicago, research out of Los Angeles as well. Uh, additionally, Atlanta is unique in that we did not have these traditional gangs here for many decades after much of the country uh, actually had an influx of traditional style gangs. So many people have friendships or relationships that predated their association with a traditional gang. So in Atlanta specifically, this is not unusual for us to see um, someone affiliated with a blood set um, still associating with or having friendship or working with musically someone who's associated with a crib set. What is the date that Jeffrey Williams became friends or associates with Mr. Sergio Kitchen's performer known as Gunner. I don't know when their relationship began. Now, this hybrid supposed YSL gang. Objection, Your Honor, with the supposed question. No, rule, no rules to enter, you told the jury, right? I don't believe that I said that. Um, again, I don't recall what my specific uh, question or answer was for that. No rules to exit. The supposed gang, right? Objection, Your Honor, was supposed. I see. True. I think there was an objection to your question. No rules to exit, right? I don't believe that I testified that. Is that true? Uh, I don't believe that I testified whether that was true or not. I'm asking you. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I don't. Again, I don't believe I testified that they have a codified set of rules um, such as a traditional gang would have. So it's fluid based upon how you, like that album cover, mixtape cover, view the evidence. Is that right? Is what fluid? This supposed gang. Objection to supposed. Mr. Williams. Same objection. Mr. Williams. Supposed gang affiliation. Objection to supposed. <clears throat> fluid, everything you're testifying to about Mr. Williams, whatever the facts that you get, that will fit a hybrid gang. Is that what you're telling the jury? Mm, that is not at all what I'm telling you. Um, again, this has been my experience, my observations, and much social science research supports the fact that the majority of street gangs are not traditional gangs. In fact, um, recent research over the past few years has shown that one of the defining characteristics of a modern street gang is its ability to transition and to, uh, to change itself, oftentimes towards a more structured approach. But the majority of street gangs are not highly structured traditional gangs. Uh, fluid is maybe not the right word, they're not that loose, um, but they are able to essentially write their own rules. 
What's important to note about that is that while gang structures are widely varied, gang processes are very similar across this entire spectrum of gangs. And so we see uh, similar behaviors promoted and reinforced amongst the gangs, um, even as their structure and the, uh, the layout of that gang may actually change. If somebody like Jeffrey Williams has an image of Young Thug, brand of Young Thug, that brand portrays a gangster rap um, persona. Do you realize that? Objection comes with testifying. A same objection. Do you know, you know personally, from your investigation, whether Young Thug Brand performs gangster rap? Um, I've not investigated any uh, brand uh, as part of this investigation. Do you know what gangster rap is? I do. Do you know that it comes with music? Objection comes testifying. I say objection. I'm asking a question. Do you know if it comes with music? Do I know if what comes with music? Gangster rap is produces music. I'm asking you that question. If gangster rap produces music? Yeah. Is it a music? Is it involved in music? Gangster rap, that term. Uh, it is a musical, musical genre, yes. And does it also, if you know, promote music videos? Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, I mean, I, I feel like I'm making up your question for does, you. I, does I, Young Thug brand have music videos? Objection, Your Honor, to Young Thug brand. That's testifying. That's the same musician. It's not in the Does the performer Young Thug create, participate in music videos. Yes, he does. And during those music videos, how long has he been doing that? I don't know when he started making music videos. And videos, when Mr. Williams, let's go back to 2000. 10, 11, 12. Do you, are you familiar with any videos from that approximate time frame that involve Mr. Williams? Are you talking about music videos? I'm talking about any videos. I am aware of videos of Mr. Williams from that time period. And during that time period, tell the ladies and gentlemen, jury, how you know that if a video is released, let's say on the um, social media, how you know whether that video was intended to be used by Mr. Williams to promote Young Thug brand or otherwise. Tell the jurors how you would know if you weren't there. Objective a compound question. A standard question. Taking any video from any time, but Jeffrey Williams in the video, how would you know to the jurors, tell the jurors, whether he was promoting his brand Young Thug? Um, to the extent that I know what his intent is ever, um, I, I wouldn't know that necessarily. However, my interest would not be if he's promoting his music, but what connection that promotion, even if it is of music, has to do with criminal gang activity. That would be my only interest in any video of Mr. Williams. And that's like what you saw of the album cover that's on the screen. You just look at everything through your vision of gangs, right? No, that, that's not true at all. As I said, um, I certainly talk to other people in law enforcement, other people that I work with, but we routinely interview um, gang members themselves, members of these gangs that are associated with this case, uh, members of rival gangs, citizens who are not involved in gang activity at all. Um, all of those things help to inform the context, our understanding of our investigations. Did you ever interview the videographers or managers for Jeffrey Williams, performer known as Young Thug. Objection, accident, It's the same. I don't believe that was asked or answered. Mr. <laughs> who did you interview who was associated with the business end of Young Thug? Objection, that was accident, It's the same question. All right, let me ask you this. Remember Mr. Walter Murphy, we talked about him a lot on tweets? Yes, sir. And his handle is something like cartel with a K underscore DK. You remember that? Yes. Okay. And is it fair to say, if you know, and if you don't know, just say I don't know, that Walter Murphy committed um, crimes, including violent crimes, 
uh, prior to the year and including the year 2015. Would you say that that's true? I would. All right. And uh, did you know, if you do know, that he was uh, heavily addicted to drugs during that time? If you know. Objection, relevant. I same question. I want you to tell, um, and, and this is the same person who was promoting through the tweets Jeffrey Williams' music, right? Remember that? I'm so sorry. Could you repeat your question? All right. This is the same person, the cartel underscore DK, uh, Walter Murphy, just for the jurors' memory, who was also promoting Jeffrey Williams going to the Stop the Violence concert, showing his uh, mixtapes. You remember all that? I'm sorry, that was a, all over the place. What was the question? This is the same person, DK, cartel underscore DK, Walter Murphy, who was also promoting Jeffrey Williams' music on the tweets that we discussed with the jurors. He, uh, yes, I believe some of the tweets he was mentioning Mr. Williams' music. Tell the ladies and gentlemen the jury how many times Jeffrey Williams has met with Mr. Walter Murphy, known as DK or Cartel DK, um, after uh, or since 2015. Objection, speculation. If you know, don't speculate at all. Do you know how many times Jeffrey Williams ever met with Mr. Walter Murphy after the year 2015? I uh, couldn't possibly know that. Well, you could know it from your investigation, right? Uh, I don't know that the information is available to find out every time that they met since 2015. Tell, ladies and gentlemen, jury then how many times Mr. Williams spoke. Mm -hmm. Social media, telephone, Instagram chat, whatever, with Walter Murphy after the year 2015. I uh, wouldn't have. If you know, I'm not answering. Okay, don't speculate. Tell the jurors how many times the two of them have spoken through any mechanism. I don't know. You analyzed, and your teammates, Jeffrey Williams' financial records. Is that true? I did not, I did not uh, investigate Mr. Williams' financial records. Okay. Did your coworker do that? I don't know who uh, investigated his financial records. Okay. Do you know that they've been investigated? Uh, I, I don't. You have no idea that no, Mr. Williams... Ask an answer. I stand a question. Tell the jurors, forget about looking at the finances, how much money has Jeffrey Williams funneled to YSL members on Cleveland Avenue? I don't know. I'd like to go back to um, the tweets to finish up what you did with the state, all the tweets. And I believe, because we told the jurors we'd go through them all, I believe that we were up to state's exhibit number 42W. I think. Remember that tweet? Not off the top of my head. Um, and I don't have my materials in front of me anymore. Chris, can you show 42 dummy? Yeah, I can, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah, this looks like them. What number were you looking for? 42W. Let me see if I can find it. Twelfth, two thousand eighteen. <coughs> tweet. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And this is what we left off of the last time we were together before the jury. Correct? Uh, I believe so. Actually, the last time we were together. Okay. And um, I stopped at the free band gang. You remember that? I do. And then I started asking you about the mixtape album artwork. Remember yes. all that? Okay. And free band. You already testified. 
That's Future's um, record label, right? I did. And it's connected to, you know, Epic Records and Sony Music, right? I don't know what label it's connected to. You, you're not aware of that? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. All right. Now, the same day, May 12, 2018, I'd like to um, ask whether you looked at the other tweets from Mr. Williams' um, Twitter account. Again, no, I did not. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'll mark as Mr. Williams' number 72. Are you approaching with it first? Sure. Your Honor, can Mr. Kokomo come forward? He may. Can Mr. Kokomo approach you? Of course. Take a look at what I mark as Mr. Williams' number 72 today's date. Okay, I see it. Okay. And do you have any reason to believe that this is not um, the tweets on the same day um, that Mr. Williams um, also has on his Twitter account what's marked and on the display of State's Exhibit number 42W? Your Honor, we would ask that Mr. Kokomo continue to show um, Investigator Duff that mm -hmm. exhibit so he can look at the full exhibit. All right. Well, do you need to look at the full exhibit? I did not look at the dates. Um, I just reviewed what was on the screen generally. Can Mr. Kokomo approach again, Your Honor? Yes, he may. No, they're not all from the same date. Okay. Well, the ones on May 12, 2018. That's my question first. You're asking if the ones from May 12, 2018 are on the same date? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Kokomo, you got ahead of me, but Mr. Kokomo also showed you uh, tweets purportedly from Mr. Williams' Twitter account from April, uh, August 12, so that's wrong, August 22, 2011, February 6, 2012, and December 9, 2015. Do you see that? Yeah, I think it's December 19th, 2015, but yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm going to ask you about those as well. Okay? Great. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment, though. If you need to see him again, I'll show him to you. <clears throat> now, were you aware that Mr. Williams' Twitter account, whoever was in charge of it, also um, used, similar to State's Exhibit 42, other um, tweets where he uses the word gang? I'm sorry, I don't think I understood the question. Okay. Were you aware... On August 22, 2011, February 5th, uh, 5th 2000, February 6, 2012, December 19, 2015, for example, that Mr. Williams' Twitter account also used gangs. Objection, Your Honor. First of all, I was testifying that he had laid a proper foundation. I stand in judgment. What, what information, if any, did you do to determine whether putting the word gang at the end of a statement um, is something Mr. Williams has done otherwise on his Twitter. Again, I don't think I understand the question. What other research did you do to prepare for this testimony to tell the jurors whether Mr. Williams on other dates also, besides May 12, 2018, also used the word gang at the end of a word or statement? Well, I had observed his Twitter account and uh, likely seen these references to the word gang and other posts, um, but no additional investigation was necessary for this. Okay. Well, did you recognize what Mr. Kokomo showed you on August 12, 2011, August 22, 2011, February 6, 2012, December 19, 2015, tweets coming from Mr. Williams' Twitter account? I saw what he showed me, yes. Okay, do you have any reason to believe that they were not on Mr. Williams' Twitter account? 
Um, I don't, but I, again, this is something you, you brought in. Okay. Your Honor, I move for the admission of Mr. Williams number 72 under the rule of completeness. Objections. Yes, Your Honor. Basis. Uh, the tweets as it relates to May 12, 2018, Your Honor, the state would not object to. However, the state would object to any tweet from 2011, 2012, 2015, as that does not put in the 2012, 2018 text <clears throat> in the context will be hearsay. All right. Counselors, come on up. I move for the admission of Mr. Williams number 72 as ordered by the court. Uh, any further objection um, from the state? No, Your Honor, we'd like to see it before it's published. All right. Yeah, we'll need, uh, Mr. Coco, we need to show that to the state, please, um, before we publish Mr. Williams 72. So, Defendant William 72 um, is admitted, maybe published as you see fit. Okay, can you see what's on the screen now? Is Mr. Williams number 72 dated today? Yes, sir. All right, and we'll just start at the bottom one just for ease on the person viewing the screen, and that is the post that is in uh, State's Exhibit number 42W. Fair to say? Yes, it is. All right, and then above it, if Mr. Kokomo can scroll up, the next one is also uh, Mr. Williams' purported Twitter account. You notice that? I do. And it is May 12, 2018, fair to say? It is. And OTF, you see the gang? Yes. And if Mr. Kokomo can just raise, no, the other way, if you don't mind. Okay, so now he has um, also May 12, 2018. You see how what you did with the state, YSL gang, capital G, Jonesboro, South gang, capital G, you see all that? I'm not sure what you're referring to as far as what I did with the state. And you testified. When you introduced, when you helped introduce Exhibit 42W. You mean when I read the tweet? Yes. Uh, yeah, to the extent I understand your question, yes, I, I believe I did read the tweet. And it's the same on the one above it on May 12, 2018, now in Mr. Williams number 72. You see it says OTF gang with a capital G, same type of format? I do. Okay. And you realize that OTF is a record label? Uh, among other things, yes. Okay. Above it? See, same date, Mr. Williams' purported Twitter account, you see that? I do. May 12, 2018, right? Yes. And again, it has um, 
A-S-A-P gang with the capital G. You see that? I do. And Yams, Y-A-M-S, capital, uh, or gang, capital G with two exclamation points. You see that? Yes. Okay, and do you know who A-S-A-P Rocky is? I do. And that person is a rapper and a label, fair to say? He is. Okay. All right. Let's go to uh, States Exhibit number 43W, if that's okay. Mr. Atkins, if you can help. through I believe if I'm wrong please correct me <clears throat> but just to be complete because we said we'd go through I said we'd go through all of the tweets that the state put in um, starting at the bottom this is May 20th of 2012 fair to say you you tracking me I am okay every real right blood wear beads so don't start no and I'm just gonna say F <clears throat> you blank K spelled with a two K's SHI blank my N Exclamation point. Fair to say? Yes. Okay. And uh, we discussed that previously, right? Uh, I, I don't recall. All right. The next one is um, the quotations. It's from July 2, 2012, right? Yes. And the quotations you've already explained, the jurors know that that means that Mr. Williams or whomever is having a handle of his Twitter account is responding to that, correct? That statement. Right. Okay, so this is from someone else at R O and N, and it says 5J colon at Young Thug World, was am, end quote, and then Mr. Williams or whoever is handling his Twitter says, What's up, blood? That's, that's what's on that one, right? It is. Okay, the one above it, I think we did this one already, but it's pretty much similar to the one below it, but it's a different date, June 7, 2012, right? It is. And it's the same quotation, somebody else in Mr. Williams or whomever is responding on his Twitter, same statement, what up blood, right? Yes. Then above it, we talked about this one, I believe, it's February 3rd, 2013, once again, and then two dots, and then I came from nothing for, you've explained that that's a mixtape, right? Uh, yes. Times True Blood, you explain that's a mixtape, right? Right. Times Mixtape with, and then it says at Gucci 1017 and coming with a, instead of a C, a K, and you've explained who Gucci is, right? Yes. He's a musical artist, right? Correct. And a producer of music. He is. And then above it, we've discussed this one, I believe, January 31, 2013, these hoes, and then five, the number, everybody blood to exclamation points. We discussed that before, right? Uh, again, I can't recall specifically. Okay. And then on the top, which should be the very top one, um, again, it's September 10th, 2000, well, not again, but it's September 10th, 2012, and whomever is handling Mr. Williams' Twitter account is, is responding to the same thing um, that we saw a little below, right? And then it's, what's up, bro? Correct? That's the, that's the tweet back. That's what it says. All right. That's everything for 43W states. Going to 44W. <clears throat> I think we discussed this one too. But just for completeness, starting at the very bottom, this is June 22, 2014 tweet. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And who's ever um, handling Mr. Williams' Twitter or Mr. Williams himself, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, hashtag Super Jams. This Friday we're going instead of a C to the B, Brazy, two exclamation points, and then um, hashtag Blatt, hashtag Stoner Tour, hashtag Stoner Nation. Fair to say? Yes. And you've already explained that you know that Super Jams is a concert in Greensboro, North Carolina. And if you didn't say it, are you familiar with that? Um, I don't recall if I said that or not. And I. Um 
I don't, I don't know what Super Jams is, I don't believe. You don't know what Super Jams is as you sit here today? I'm sorry? Do you doubt that it is a um, concert, Objection. music concert? You already said ask and answer. That's the same question. Did you ever look into what Super Jams is when you were identifying this tweet for the state? Uh, no. Okay. And the next one, after the hashtag black, which we'll get to, because they're all black on this page, right, of uh, states 44W? Yeah, it looks like the rest of them are, yes. And then Stoner Tour, you know that, and I believe uh, you're familiar that that's a uh, song that Mr. Williams, and it was very popular, right, Stoner? Yeah, I'm familiar with the song, yes. And then the next one, Stoner Nation, same song, right? Uh, yeah, Stoner is, yeah, the song. All right, then just going up, we've discussed this before, follow my dog, SMM underscore all, and then five instead of the S, maybe t star, hashtag black, and then above it, I'm not trying to go too fast, but it's just black, above it, black, above it, black, and I know I didn't read it verbatim, but that's basically what it says, correct? I'm sorry, did you jump to the one from July 16, 2012? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, above it, July 11th, 2012, above it, September 4th, 2012. Uh, uh, they, they basically say black. I got you, sorry, you were going tweet by tweet, and then you started going all the way up the page. <laughs> yeah, it just says black a whole lot of times. And you've explained to jurors that black is um, blood love all the time. I have. The next one is State's Exhibit number 45. And I believe we discussed this, so we'll go fast if that's okay. On the bottom is September 14, 2011. I like the YouTube video, gives the um, jump, and then Young Thug Rock Crew hyphen curtains featuring the real crew. You already said cr curtains is a song, right? Uh, yes. The next one above it, September 3, 2011. I favorited a YouTube video, gives the site, and then Young Thug, Rock Crew, hyphen education. You already said education's a song. You know that to be true, right? Yes. Above it is um, something we discussed also. That's the Tumblr. It's uh, introducing the Tumblr, right? Correct. And it's a shout out to, if you see in the top on December 29, 2011, the line underneath it, photo on the avenue with the rock crew with a K, three exclamation points, shout out to, and then it's um, at John's, at John Woe Visions. And you already discussed who that person is, right? The videographer, remember that? Photo photographer, whatever. Yes. All right. And then above it, we talked about, I believe, September 3rd, 2011. Again, it's I like the YouTube video, and it gives it the site, and then Young Thug Rock Crew, No Thinkings, No Thinkings, a song we discussed, right? I believe we did, yes. And then above it is uh, we pulling curtains on them, Rock Crew, Know That I'm Worthy, exclamation point, and then it goes to a YouTube, gives a site, that's September 6th, 2011, and you already said curtains is a song, right? Yes. All right. If we go to um, States Exhibit number 45A, 45WA, we've already discussed that, and that's the shout out, right? And that's included in the Tumblr. Yes, sir. And you didn't review the other Tumblrs, you said? Not yet, no. Okay. Have you reviewed it now? No, sir. I unfortunately have not had time. Um, other court obligations have prevented me from doing that yet. All right. Let's look at States Exhibit number 46W. <clears throat> That's in evidence. And we have spoken about some of these, but if you can just take a minute um, and look at them, and it's fair to say that this is a lot of replacing C with B, something like that. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, um, it is. Okay, and I, and I know it's not always, like in the second to bottom one, November 26, 2011, um, it's responding, the word Cleveland is with a C. <laughs> Yes, and there's some examples of using the uh, red B emoji right as well. Okay. 
And we've already talked about, I believe, that it's common, you know, in hip-hop music and other artists to change the C to a B. You're familiar with that? Um, it is common among some in hip-hop music. And we named some during your testimony, right? I believe right? you did. Okay. All right, the next one is stage 47W. <clears throat> I believe, again, we discuss these because a lot of these are repeated. Do you realize that in the state's exhibits? A lot of what are repeated? The, the tweets. They're, they're in different exhibits. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. All right. Um, and this is state's exhibit 47W. Um, we discussed that before. Mr. Williams or whomever is handling his tweet, Twitter account at that point. Um, December 15, 2011, responding to... Um, the tweet at Mon M D C calling it Thug World, Young Thug World. I seen an N with a Crip with a K flag today, talking about he with the Rock, and the end quote. And then the Twitter back from Mr. Williams or whomever it's handling is Boy Stop, comma comma comma. Never that, right? Right. I think we discussed the above it too. October 16, 2011, um, it's replying to Pee Wee Longway, you see that? Yes, sir. And then it's, it's saying at Pee Wee Longway, at Scooter 1426, <clears throat> hashtag 1426, rock with a C, MPA, together, it's over, let's work, right? Yes. Okay, and you realize that those people are involved in the music industry as well? Among other things, yes. All right. Um, January 4th, 2012 is above it. You see that? Yes. Um, and this one I don't think we uh, ever discussed. But if I'm wrong, just tell me. But it's repeating or replying to the quotations at major X kiss colon at young thug world. I don't know the rock crew sign look exclamation point three times, so no, exclamation point three times, and then end quote, and then the reply by Mr. Williams or whomever is handling his Twitter, well, F you, and then two Ks in a row, that's Simon, I'll shoot that little SHI down, two exclamation points, fair to say? Yes. All right. The next one is July 18, 2011. You uh, already discussed, I believe, that you know Primal is an establishment uh, to perform music. Do you realize that? Yes, sir. And I think we discussed it. If I'm wrong, tell me. But anyway, it's, it's Young Thug World coming through Primal tonight. So you know the... So you know that rock crew will be in the... And then uh, blank ITCH, Stupid Strong, right? Right. All right. Above it is the November 22, 2011. And it's at Young Scooter and at Young Thug World about to make history today. And then it gives hashtags. You see that? I do. And you know that Young Scooter and Mr. Williams did a song together, or songs together, you right? Yes. All right. The next one. I think we discussed it, December 15, 2011, that's hashtag MDC, hashtag ARC, hashtag rock, hashtag Christmas, or it's Xmas night, we gonna be a hashtag TTU, and you know TTU is too turned up, right? Yes. Means having fun? Objection speculation. If you know, do you know what TTU stands for? Um, as, you, as you said, it stands for too turned up. And do you know what it means? <clears throat> uh, I mean, it, it's... Not a specific thing, but it means yeah, they're going to party your, uh, I guess the, 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 the current term is lit. Okay. Um, and then that's on Christmas, right? Christmas night, that's what it's advertising? It appears that's what it's saying. I shouldn't say advertising. Yes. All right. The next one, I think we uh, uh, discussed earlier. This is August 31, 2011. I love my rock family. And then at Rock Crew Daddio at Young Zoo one at Maybach underscore rock crew and then hashtag follow now and we went to the other you can go to the other Twitters, right? Uh yeah, that's, that's what, what I was gonna say. Yeah. 
Okay, and then the final one is uh, January 9, 2017. Rock means to me, and then quote unquote, rich off crack with a lot of emojis, four emojis. You should relax, something like that, right? It does. All right, and that's everything for stage 47, fair to say? Yes. Next one is stage 48W, if you don't mind. I have it. That's out. And while you look at it, while it's coming on screen, most of these are repeats, fair to say? Uh, yeah, they appear to be. Okay. <clears throat> so if we go to the very bottom, you can just go up. You see that August 10, 2012? I do. And um, it's replying to the quotes, SMM for life, fair to say? Yes. All right. And you said SMM, sex, money, murder. Fair to say? Yes. All right. The one above it is January 31, 2013. You see that? I do. And that has... Um, um, people... A YouTube, um, a YouTube insignia and then other people are being identified... Um, and then it says at SMM underscore player pound, or excuse me, hashtag against me, and then the YouTube on repeat. You see that? I do. And you already told the jurors against me is the song, right? Right. Above it, again, is the same type of thing. It's inside the quotes. And uh, Mr. Williams or whomever is doing his Twitter said, us, what up? Responding to uh, what's popping five and, and fair to say yes. All right. The one above it is similar, Mr. Williams or whomever. It's February twenty eighth, two thousand twelve. Responding to the what's inside the quotations again. S M M exclamation point. What's popping? Exclamation point. Right. Yes. And then August twenty seventh, two thousand twelve. And that's saying rock with a five, crew with a K, SMM, they ride in for thugger, three exclamation points, hashtag black, right? Yes, sir. You already defined that. And then above it, we've already discussed it, correct? We have. And the, the one above it, we've already discussed it. That's in a song, right? Uh, yeah, as, as you said, um, you believe it's a song lyric. Okay. Do you have any reason to believe it's not? Um, I don't. Okay. And then above it, again, um, that is uh, that is music, right? Well, I follow, it's the very top one. Follow my dog, SMM underscore all, and then five star uh, hashtag black. I don't believe that's music. You don't know that to be music? I, what part of that are you asking if it's music? If you go to SMM underscore five star um, hashtag black on that date, you don't get music? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I didn't go t to his account on that date, but I, I can't remember if you showed me something from that date or not. That's fine. All right, the next one, I think we discussed it all, but just for completeness, is 49W. And if you could just start at the bottom. And then that, again, is, we've discussed that, right? I believe so, yes. I mean, we just discussed it even today. We discussed it last week, too. Sure. February 2, 2013. That's music, right? Yes, sir. The one above it is uh, Mr. Walter Murphy, who we discussed, right? We did. And that, again, uh, they're going to, Mr. Williams is going to the uh, Stop the Violence uh, concert in Chattanooga, Tennessee that day, right? We discussed that, yes. Okay, the next one above it is um, in quotation marks, but not from someone else. But it's June 30, 2012, an ounce of blood is worth more than a pound of friendship, quote unquote. You know that to be a well known statement, right? That's a, that's a well known saying. Is that true? Objection, counsel, Big I'm all with objection. 
Um, I've heard similar things to this. I don't know if I've heard this exact quote before. Okay. Do you know that? Do you know that a person could get on Amazon and get that exact quote as an inspirational saying? I sustain that objection. <laughs> okay. Are you aware that that? Do you know where this quote comes from? I, I don't. All right. All right. Um, the next one above it is January 31, 2013. Again, it's applying, uh, replying to um, it's us, Shardy Cohen at Young Thug World. How much for a? F F it says FT blood, but that's a feature, right? You know what? You know what that means? I would interpret it that way, yes. And a feature is Mr. Williams performing, right? Correct. And the response is uh, go to his management at um, Archivet, right? Yes. And then above it is um, kind of cut off, but I read it as August 4th, 2012. Can you make that out? I do. I can see it. All right. And then again, it's applying, <coughs> replying to the quotation at JAG underscore MD5, pay for PU blank blank Y. No, I get too many freebies with emojis. And then uh, word to blood, hashtag black. Fair to say? Yes. All right. And the top one I can't read. It's blurted out on state's exhibit number 49 for whatever reason. Is that yours too? Yes, sir. I can't either. Okay. And then the last one, the state's exhibit number 50. And I believe we've done all of these. Take a look at it. I'm wrong, just tell me which ones we did not do. Uh, I, I believe that we did, um, to the extent that I can recall. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to... who are not in a gang, you're aware through your investigation that people in the Cleveland Avenue, that area, helped Mr. Williams to popularize his music. you remember testifying to that? Um, I don't remember the specific question and answer from that part of the testimony. Well, I think I asked you more about... Um, it was that question, but it also revolved around um, Quentin Porter, known as Boo. Okay. He helped Jeffrey Williams get into establishments, <clears throat> promote his music. And what was the question about him? That him and others helped promote Jeffrey Williams, the musical entertainer. I do believe that Mr. Porter did, um, to the extent that others is pretty broad. I, um, I don't want to specify that. Well, even in these tweets that we discussed, people were promoting the music of Mr. L or the performer known as Young Thug. Fair to say? Yeah, certainly people were promoting him. And in videos, you're aware that Mr. Williams, or pictures, or songs that he would talk about, um, use his hands to show what you perceive to be a um, gang sign, where uh, jewelry, tattoos, all of that you realize promoted the brand Young Thug. Objection your honor, speculation as to what the purpose of why the post work. I stand in objection. Okay, don't tell me the purpose because you can't read anyone else's mind. You've said that. But do you realize that the Young Thug brand Used and capitalized. Objection, Your Honor. Testifying. Some effects by that. I stand objection. Do you know whether young thug Jeffrey Williams used 
the environment to promote music. I'm not even sure. What environment? The environment that he grew up in. So the question is, am I aware that he used his environment where he grew up to promote his music? He realized that part of being an artist like Jeffrey Williams in gangster rap objection. is Thank to... Assume if do you realize? Is a a same question. <clears throat> the brand Young Thug is gangster rap, right? Objection speculation. If you know, do you know? I'm, uh, well, Objection, Your Honor. It's still speculation. It's not speculation if he knows. No, it's a, a, a form of the question I'm sustaining. You can rephrase it if you like. Do you know whether Young Thug performs gangster rap? Y yes, he does. And what does gangster rap entail in a music form if you know? I would have no idea how to answer that question as to what does it entail. Okay. Now, if there are videos made to promote a song, and during that song there are references that you believe reference gang like I'm making with my hand, like a B, you realize that's commonplace in gangster rap. Objection, or if he realizes it's objection. Do you know whether it is commonplace for certain artists to adopt gang logos, terms? Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is used by certain artists um, to replace certain terms. Yes. Okay. And on, let's say, a video, just any video, if Jeffrey Williams is aware that he's being video, objection. Do you? Speculation. So what? Was, if he, if Mr. Williams is aware. That's the same objection. If there's a video, if it's obvious that somebody's videoing other people, do you know whether Jeffrey Williams? <laughs> is performing in that video to enhance the young thug image. Objection is speculation as to why Mr. Williams is doing anything. I stand objection. Do you know that there are videos of countless performers or athletes where they are promoting their trade? Objection of question. Showing that they're part of a gang. There's nothing wrong with that in a video, is there? I'm not sure I understood the question. There's nothing wrong with Jeffrey Williams appearing in a video to promote Young Thug's brand by acting like a gangster, is uh, there? Objection, Your Honor, that'd be speculation. I, know. I stand the objection. <clears throat> when you spoke with the gang members of the, I think you said, rival gang who took offense to the super slimy mixtape cover? Is that your test? Didn't you testify something like that? Objection is characterization of testimony. I'm asking you, did you testify to that? Um, I'll rule the objection. You can rephrase the question, though. Did you testify to that? I did not testify to that. That was not my testimony. There's nothing wrong with that album cover okay. that you know of that is illegal. Is Council there? Council is testifying improper questions. Yeah, I said man has asked an answer, so I'll stand on all bases. Is there any Let's move on, Mr. Steele. Okay. May I have one moment then? May I have one moment? Yes.
you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take about 10 minutes and then we'll see where the uh, see where the lunchtime hour leads us at that point, okay? All right, so we'll be in recess uh, 10 minutes. All right, all rise. Um, all right, we're going to take 10 minutes and then um, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, recess and recess for the hour. And then I'll probably, we'll probably come back around 1 o'clock and we can start up again. All right, we're in recess.
Okay. All right, can we um, get Investigator Beltnap back? Yes. And we're, we're going to go ahead and probably just break for lunch since, there, since lunch is here, okay? Thank you. Right. He has stepped into the restroom, so he's okay. All right. Sorry, anyone, is everybody here? Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Can we summon our jurors first, please? Uh, Mr. Matthews, is here? Is that here? Oh, I didn't see him. Thank you. Originally that came up. I think Brown originally mentioned that back in November when the first, that first stuff happened. Oh, did it? Yeah, I think so. But I, mean, I, I don't, I'll park with you. I won't be. Okay, so it doesn't matter to me. Just park with you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, yeah. No, we have. Okay, all right. All right. Some of our jurors, please.
ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, it is now the lunchtime hour, and um, I recommend that we take lunch at this point in time and have you all come back for um, for 1.15. How's that sound? And then we'll continue with the afternoon's activities, all right? Okay, all right, remember all the admonitions I've given you is that when you're away from the space, they, they apply. And uh, enjoy your lunch. We'll see you back at 1.15, okay? All right, all rise. I know you're ready to go, right? <laughs> I'm by the door. He's already at the door. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our jury has left us. Uh, we'll see you all back. Uh, investigator Belton, up. We'll see you back at 115 as well. Don't discuss your testimony. Anybody except the attorneys in this case. Sure. And those of you uh, with uh, advocates, we'll see you all back at 115, okay? Sure. All right, we're in recess.
Um, before we start, I, I had a, you had inquired prior to our break whether anybody else had any cross examination for the for the witness. Nobody appeared to have any additional cross examination. So before we get into redirect, which was anticipated to be at least an hour and a half, I'm going to renew my motion for a severance based on prejudicial um, spillover. <coughs> and um, even though this is a conspiracy. No, I don't. Okay. Oh, actually, okay. Um, I don't believe that a conspiracy um, has been proven, number one, and I don't think that makes any difference at this point as to Mr. Nichols. He did not cross-examine. He can't be dragged in by the bootstraps of somebody else's cross-examination, he is entitled to a 105 instruction. And you can say the word conspiracy all day. You can say it all night. That doesn't mean that he gets tagged with everybody else's cross-examination and the evidence that is that comes in on redirect. I understand your ruling. I, 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 I do. I want to renew my motion. I want to re renew my request for a 105 instruction. And I'm doing it now so that, I don't, so that I don't interrupt after every question and ask for a continuing motion and request. Um, and I'm just renewing that. I, I, I understand what you're likely to rule. All right. State, you want to respond? Just the same um, response as his previous had with the same argument that Mr. Um, Nichols is a part of the conspiracy. The evidence of one is evidence of all. And therefore, we would ask that um, you deny the request for severance and deny the request um, for a 105 instruction. All right. I'm going to maintain the earlier posture that I've, I've indicated, Mr. Harvey. So I will deny your motion for severance at this time and also deny your motion for 105 instruction, and I'll make it a continuing objection, okay? Thank you, sir. All right. Sir. Your Honor, um, I have a uh, piggyback, excuse me, I apologize. <coughs> I have um, a compliment to that motion that Mr. Harvey just made. Can I just give the court a copy of the case to look at at your review? At your pleasure. Okay. 312, Georgia ALA. Now, this is uh, Stafford, S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D, versus State, 312 Georgia 811. It's in Division 5A. It's 865 Southeast 2D 116 2021. And on page 12 of 14, on the copy that I've given the prosecutor in this honorable court and the honorable Mr. Kearns, I just want to highlight that... Um, on the left-hand side, the last full paragraph, our highest court wrote, before admitting statements of a co-conspirator, the statement is, excuse me, the state is required to show by a preponderance of the evidence that the conspiracy existed, all that the conspiracy included, the declarant and the defendant against whom the statement is offered and the statement was made during the course and in furtherance of the conspiracy. And I raise that because I concur with Mr. Harvey and I'm going back to like Mr. Eppinger. Obviously, I'm not talking about tweets that purportedly come from the Twitter account of Mr. Williams, but Mr. Eppinger, I made that same objection. I've been making it the whole time. I don't think that the state has placed, in my opinion, obviously you um, decide. But I don't believe that the state has put forth any evidence except the statement themselves that Mr. Eppinger is part of YSL. And it, if it is what it says, if the Supreme Court meant what it said before admitting the statements of a co-conspirator, the state is required to show by preponderance of evidence that the conspiracy existed and that the conspiracy included in my 
um, view Mr. Eppinger's and Mr. Williams' um, against whom the statement is offered. And it's being offered against Mr. Williams, but there's no evidence outside of Mr. Eppinger's Instagram account that Mr. Eppinger is somehow related to Mr. Williams or anyone else. So I just want to point that out. We've before, Mr. Steele. So this is just a newer case um, authored by Justice LaGrua from our Supreme Court. But it seems to state the same issue that you've argued once before. Well, I, and I just want to, you know, I feel very comfortable with the before the state's doing it. The state's putting it in first and then using that um, statement, in this case, Mr. Eppinger's Instagram, to say, aha, here's YSL on his uh, Instagram logo. And I don't believe it. I think that the cart is being put in front of the horse. So that, that's my objection. And the state's response is always the same. It's, it's charged as a conspiracy. That's not the rule. So I want to raise that. Thank you. All right. Ms. Hilton? Your Honor, again, the state's position remains the same, that we are in the process of proving the conspiracy, that the conspiracy does exist. We do believe we are showing, and we have shown that by preponderance of the evidence, that there is a conspiracy as to count one, the RICO count, and to show that Mr. Eppinger is a part of the enterprise that is YSL. And so that evidence to, would come in to show that he is a part of the greater enterprise, which is the RICO charge in count one, Your Honor. Okay, but are the statements made in furtherance of the conspiracy, madam? Yes, Your Honor. To show the association with the, the association and the nature of the larger YSL enterprise. Okay. Um, Mr. Steele, I'm going uh, I'm gonna overrule your objection at this point in time. And uh, unless there's anything else, uh, I'll call up for our jurors and we can begin. We can uh, finish the examination of. Uh, Investigator Bell now. Would you include that also with continuing conspiracy, I mean, continuing objection to the conspiracy, um, co conspirator statements, Your Honor? I'll make it a continuing objection for the, because you, you've raised this before already, so it's not a new thing that you have asked me to consider, you nor Mr. Harvey. So I'll, I, I, it's already continuing at this point in time, okay? Yes, sir. All Thanks. right. Summer our jurors, please, sir. Can we get, um, Investigator Belknap, back, please. Good afternoon, sir. Please be seated. All right, thank you, uh, Sergeant Room. All right. Um, 
Well, we left off, ladies and gentlemen, um, in the state, and you're about to do redirect. Is that correct, Ms. Hilton? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So um, last week on cross-examination, I'm going to start with Mr. Shard's cross-examination questions, okay? Um, he asked you about how you received the tweets that were entered into evidence. You recall that line of questioning? Mm, I do. <clears throat> While you did not pull the tweets that you reviewed, were you familiar with the Twitter account at Young Thug? Yes, ma'am, I was. And how long had you been aware of that account? <sighs> um... Uh, likely as far back as 2011 or 12. Okay. And Mr. Steele, when he um, spoke with you, actually, if you were familiar with a person by the name of Marissa Viverito, do you remember that? I do. And how are you familiar with Marissa Viverito? Um, I've worked with her for, um, uh, for a long time now in a variety of capacities over the years. And where is she currently employed? She's currently employed by the Atlanta Police Department. And approximately how long has she been with the Atlanta Police Department? Um, she's been back with APD for maybe about a year. Okay. And what does she currently do in her role at APD? She is an investigative analyst with APD. All right. Um, and in working with um, her as an investigative analysis, do the two of you work together? We do. And prior to her working at APD, where did she work? Um, immediately before that, she worked for the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. And do you know what she did for the Fulton County District Attorney's Office? Um, she started as an investigator, and I believe she was a lieutenant when she um, resigned and returned to APD. And to your knowledge, while she was both with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office and with APD, um, did she assist with this investigation? Yes, she did. Okay. And has she continued to assist with this investigation since being at APD? She has. And to your knowledge, is part of her responsibilities observing, looking at, and pulling social media accounts? It is. And to your knowledge, did she pull the Twitter accounts um, of the tweets that you reviewed last week? Objection, Your Honor. Ask the answer. Please. I don't really sir. Uh, I, I believe that she did. Okay. And let me ask you this. Between you and Investigator Viverito, who has more knowledge about rock, the earlier iterations of rock crew transitioning to SMM? Okay, hey, hey, hey. What do we say about one objection at a time? Ms. Weaver's only going to be able to take one. So can you stand and rise? Uh, Mr. Matthews, I've told you about that. We'll go ahead and handle Mr. Sharp to begin. What's the basis for your objection, sir? I'll sustain the objection. What was your objection basis, sir? The same, right? All right. How long have you been following Rock Crew? Uh, I probably, I would say since 2009 or 2010, likely 2009. And do you know if Ms. Viverito has ever followed Rock Crew? I don't recall if she was working with us uh, during the Rock Crew investigation, uh, maybe at the end of it. At the end. And when you say the end of it, when, when are you referring to? I would say um, the, the bulk of our Rock Crew investigation was probably 2011, 12, and, and maybe into 13. Okay. So she may have become familiar around 2013-ish. Yeah, and, I, and forgive me if the dates are off, but uh, it wouldn't have been in the early phases of that. Okay. And the tweets that we were looking at were some of them from 2011 and 2012. Yes, ma'am, they were. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Shaw also asked you a number of questions regarding um, getting into the gang. Do you recall him asking you about whether you can get beat into the gang or sexed into the gang? Yes. Okay. Is there another way that you can gain access into a gang? There is. What is that? It's the third one that we think we talked about in my, my earlier testimony. You can also um, commonly be blessed into a gang. Okay. Now, do you recall Mr. Sharp asking you, um, in his line of question, asking you about getting beaten, and you began talking about being aware of um, YSL members in the school potentially beating in um, individuals? Do you recall that line of question? I do. All right. Now, what, if any, information do you have or do you have knowledge of as far as students in school, particularly YSL members, beating in um, individuals at the school? Do you have an objection, sir? Yes, sir. I have an objection. Competition plus slash 
Aye. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection. Mr. Sharp? My objection is exactly the same, Your Honor. Unless he has personal knowledge. Overruled. You may answer. Um, I've reviewed police reports over um, a number of years where we had fights in schools um, related to YSL gang activity, and I didn't review specific reports before today as far as the um, as far as those those fights that occurred. During cross examination, Mr. Sharp, you were also asked a question about whether someone can unilaterally join YSL. Do you remember that? I do. Um, and you said no, but you were not given the opportunity to explain. Based on your knowledge, training, experience, why don't you think that someone can unilaterally join the gang YSL? Well, and I think I've said this potentially before, but the gang determines who the gang's members are. And um, in my experience and through our investigation, um, the gang members themselves uh, make a distinction between those that they believe are members of the gang and those that are not. Um, but I've not ever seen an instance where someone declared themselves a member of the gang without, um, without any other association with the group. Um, Mr. Sharp, we're asked you about a book of knowledge. Do you remember that? I do. Um, in your training, knowledge, and experience, do all traditional, non-traditional hybrid gangs have books of knowledge? Basically, I don't understand the question. Okay. Uh, I'll still it, sir. Okay. No, um, in fact, most gangs don't have books of knowledge. Um, even traditional gangs on the West Coast um, don't have books of knowledge um, on the West Coast. And uh, what we've seen, since West Coast gangs don't typically have books of knowledge, we've seen them um, become a thing here. They've been, been created um, here as some of those West Coast traditional gangs have moved here. Uh, this is to facilitate that the sharing of information that is shared person to person where these gangs originated. Um, and since this is a different location, the other side of the, the country, um, we've seen those books of knowledge uh, show up here. Books of knowledge are commonly associated with traditional gangs in the Midwest, um, often Chicago-based gangs. That's where we've most commonly seen those over the years. But as I mentioned this morning, the majority of gangs are not traditional gangs. Uh, the majority of gangs are somewhere on that continuum of what we term non-traditional or hybrid gangs. And most do not have a book of knowledge or some codified set of rules uh, and, and codes and things like that for their members. Okay. Um, do you also recall Mr. Sharp asking about a due structure, whether or not all gangs have a due structure? Yeah, I do. Um, do all gangs have a due structure? No, certainly all gangs don't have a due structure. Is there a requirement of a joining ceremony for a group to be considered a gang or an enterprise? There is not. Is there a requirement for a book of knowledge for a group to be a gang or an enterprise? There is not. Is there a requirement for there to be a due structure for a gang to be considered, uh, for a group to be considered a gang or an enterprise? No, ma'am, there is not. Okay. Now, if a group does not have a um, joining ceremony, a book announcement, or a due structure, how do you determine if that group is a gang? Again, we go back to the definition that we started with from the beginning, which is... Uh, this gets into the law, and the jurors get from the court. I'll check. I'll sustain the objections to the former question, ma'am. You probably need to rephrase that. Okay. Is this what you've already testified to, how, how it's already determined? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. On cross, Mr. Shaw asked you about um, certain members of certain members and founders of YSL. Do you remember that line of questioning? I do. As a department, God bless you. As a department, how many members of YSL have you identified? Uh, I believe we've identified and answered. Overruled. I believe we've identified over 100 members and associates of YSL. And are all are all of those individuals listed on this indictment? No, they are not. And you were asked specifically about Fernando Crenshaw and whether he claimed to be a founder of YSL. Do you remember that? I do. To your knowledge, has Mr. Williams, Mr. Jeffrey Williams, Mr. Walter Murphy, and Mr. Trontavis Stevens ever acknowledged Fernando Crenshaw as a founder of YSL? Not to my knowledge, no. Now I'm going to transition to... Um, some of the questions that Mr. Steele asked you over the last couple of days, okay? Yes, ma'am. So first, Mr. Steele asked you a number of questions about the tweets 
we spend a lot of days on tweets, and if the tweets that were introduced were in and of itself a crime, do you remember that, that line of questioning? I do. Over the years of monitoring the Young Thug Twitter account, have you ever disputed that he also uses, the, uses that account to promote his music? I have not. For his concerts? I have not. Okay. And also reviewing his account, have you seen where he also promotes his gang or his gang affiliation? I have. Uh, Basis? That goes to intent. That's for the jury. Or rules, sir. I have. Are tweets in and of itself a crime? Um, not necessarily. And when you say not necessarily, what do you mean? Um, some tweets could rise to the level of terroristic threats, um, something of that nature, but, but no, um, typically they would not in and of themselves be a crime. Okay. And Mr. Steele also asks if being in a gang in and of itself or associating with a gang is a crime. Is it a crime to be in a gang? It is not a crime to be in a gang. Is every piece of evidence a crime? I sustain the objection. When you're evaluating a case, do you look at each piece of evidence separately or do you look at it all collectively? Objection. I'm going to sustain it for other reasons. But he is a. I'm going to sustain it for other reasons. All right. Let me ask you this. Hypothetically, is leaving a shirt at an armed robbery a crime in and of itself? No, it is not. <laughs> Hypothetically, it's writing words on a piece of paper, say for example, I robbed John Doe with a gun, a crime in and of itself. No, it is not. Hypothetically, it's finding the DNA on the shirt that is left at the armed robbery of armed robbery scene a crime by itself. No, it's not. Hypothetically, can leaving the shirt at the armed robbery scene plus finding the DNA Plus finding the note provide evidence of whether the whether a person committed that particular armed robbery. Yes, it certainly could. I'm going to show you what's already been um, admitted at State's Exhibit Number One, slide number two. Now, is this the same train that you spoke about back in November of um, last year? Mm, yes, ma'am, it is. Now, when you look at tweets as a piece of evidence, would that factor in any part of this gang training when you're trying to ascertain whether or not a crime was in furtherance of a gang? Your Honor. You have an objection, sir? You got a state objection, and, I, and I'm going to ask you the basis. So. Yes. Um, this goes to conduct. It is not beyond Kennedy jury. It's the law. I'm going to overrule the objection, sir. You can't answer. So, reviewing a tweet or other social media could potentially factor into several places on this triangle. Um, one, as we discussed, is it, it could actually be evidence um, of a crime itself, so it could actually be connecting the person to the crime if they make a confession to a crime, or if, in the example of terroristic threats, they were to actually commit the crime through the message. Um, additionally, as we're trying to determine if this person is employed by or associated with the gang, some social media could provide assistance with us identifying whether they are um, claiming or participating um, in a criminal street gang, again, which in and of itself wouldn't be the crime, um, but could be evidence of their association with the gang. Um, additionally, reviewing large amounts of social media over a number of associated persons over time also is um, answering part of our questions about the definition of a street gang and whether this group would meet the qualifications of a street gang based on those common identifying signs, symbols, tattoos, graffiti, attire, or other distinguishing characteristics. Thank you. Mr. Steele also asked you specifically if the words furtherance of the gang is represented on that triangle. Do you recall that? I do. Are those words specifically on the triangle? No, they're not. Okay. At what point in the triangle do you determine if a crime is in furtherance of the gang, although those words aren't specifically on the triangle? Your Honor, that's the law. And I Could you make an objection, Mr. Steele, and then let me go ahead and acknowledge you? Okay, basis. It's getting into the law and not behind the can't play the jury. You make your thoughts and the jury. 
I'm going to over the objection. Let me answer the question. Um, so during our investigation, we evaluate all of the evidence that we gather um, through through this lens, and from there, our knowledge of what it means to participate in the gang and what its um, potential motivations are would be at what point we would be, we would decide whether we believe there's enough evidence that this is furtherance of the gang's activities, and we would then bring that evidence forward um, to a judge or to a grand jury to present the evidence that we have. Now, Mr. Steele introduced a number of different tweets and asked if you were if they were in context to a particular tweet. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to ask you first, outside of any promotional tweets, did you see gang identifiers for either Rock Crew, The Bloods, or YSL uh, in the tweets that Mr. Steele introduced during his cross-examination? I did. All right. I'm going to first show you Defense Exhibit 61. And if we can zoom in. On the January 15th, 2012 tweets. Now, we're gonna to go to the, the tweets that the state first introduced, which is um, January 15th, excuse me, we didn't introduce these. Looking at January 15th, 2012 tweet, the one on the bottom, which says, niggas keep putting my name, no shit, I'ma let them think it's cool, till they beat the fuck up straight, three arrows or three carrots, and they go for everybody. Within that tweet, do you see any, what you would call gang identifiers in, in that particular tweet? What I would note is what we've discussed uh, a bit is the, um, the avoidance of the use of the letter C replacing that with the letter K. Also looking at the tweet above it, nigga ain't giving me shit, so I'm not coming nowhere. Your shit gonna get shoot up, shoot up, FR, FR, exclamation point. Do you see that same type of reference of a C um, being used with a K? I do. All right. As far as context, were there any tweets introduced that said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to shoot your shit up for real, for real? No, I didn't see any tweets like that. Were there any tweets to put this tweet in context that says, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to beat anything up? Is there anything in there that gives any context to that? No, ma'am. So outside of the promotional tweets that are contained within this exhibit, is that still a tweet that appears to be threatening to shoot something up for real, for real? Objection not be on the can of the jury. I'll sustain that one. <laughs> and outside the promotional tweets, are gang identifiers still being used in those two tweets? I believe so. Yes. Yes. I'll sustain the question. I'm going to now show exhibit 62. What was the last 61. 61. Okay. This is 62? Yes. All right. Within States Exhibit 62, do you see any um, gang identifiers in the promotional tweets that are um, after the top tweet with the two guns and the pistol peak? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. And with the two guns and pistol peak, is there any significance about the two guns next to the pistol peak? Yes. Um, Two guns being the sex money murder hand sign, um, and that, of course, being a reference to Pistol Pete. All right. Now I'm going to show you Defense Exhibit 64. In Defense Exhibit 64, who is the author of the first June 9, 2012 tweet? The one at the top of the page is um, Walter Murphy. 
So that's not the Young Thug account tweeting? It is not. And Mr. Um, Steele asked you about um, DK or Walter Murphy. Do you know Cartel DK to be Walter Murphy? I do. And to your knowledge, is that the same Walter Murphy who was said to be a founder of YSL? Yes, it is. And to your knowledge, does Mr. Murphy claim affiliation with the Bloods? Yes, he does. And within that tweet that is posted by Mr. Murphy, do you see any blood ident gang identifiers? Excuse me. I do. And what is that? At the end of the tweet, it says Blatt. Next, I want to go to defense exhibit number 70. Now, in looking at defense exhibit number 70, um, you talked about there being a potential gang war during the time where this album or this um, album cover came out. Do you recall that line of um, questioning? I do. When you discuss that there were back and forth messages, were these messages overt or subliminal during this time period of this gang war? I don't know if I use the word subliminal, but they weren't always um, explicit. There were some explicit um, messages and some that were not. Okay. And in your knowledge training experience, when it comes to gangs or individuals involved in a gang war, do they sometimes use messages that are not, that are subliminal? Yes, they often use um, implied or, or um, not um, immediately apparent messages. Okay. When did this war begin between YSL and either if gang, if gang? Um, it, our investigation of it began in January of 2015. Okay. And to your knowledge, is it still going? Yes, it is. All right. And during these last nine years, have you seen um, the postings that you referenced regarding the bird handling the snake? I have. All right. And have you seen that image as late as 2021 and 2022? Yes, I have. Are you familiar with the Instagram account 44 Stevo? I am. How are you familiar with that Instagram account? Um, through a number of investigations. Okay. And when did you first start following that account? Uh, I don't recall. It's been a few years. And we say a few years about? Huh? Uh, I mean, probably three or four years at least. And do you know whose Instagram account that belongs to? I do. Who is that? It's uh, Steven Johnson. And is Steven Johnson associate or a member of a gang? He is. What gang is that? He's associated with ABG. And is ABG a part of that rivalry with YSL? Yes, ma'am. And on that Instagram account, have you seen the pictures of the bird handling the snake that you referenced last week? I have. Permission to approach your honor? You may. As long as you've shown that to the defense counsels. show you what's in the mark and states in the 61W and 62W. Do you recognize 61W and 62W? I do. And how do you recognize 61W and 62W? Um, these are screenshots of posts made to the account belonging to Stephen Johnson. And do those 61W and 62W contain imagery of what you discussed last week of the bird handling the snake? when you talked about in relation to the exhibit, um, defense exhibit, defense exhibit number 70. They do. Um, and does that maybe be a fair and accurate depiction of what you were referencing last week um, regarding the bird and snake that you discussed last week? Yes, ma'am. You know, at this time, the state would like to turn the state exhibit 61W and 62W into evidence. You said 61W and what? 62W, Your Honor. All right, any objection to state 61W and 62W? Not on behalf of Mr. Williams. Continuing, continuing objection. Okay. Um, I'll make a continuing objection on behalf of um, Mr. Harvey's objection, and uh, I will admit 61W 61 and 62W. Uh, and then we will publish as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I'm first going to publish 61W.
Now, looking at 61W, um, if you could just describe for the jurors what's contained within 61W. So this is a uh, picture of a person um, facing from behind them. They appear to be wearing a jacket that says NetLife, and there are some emojis um, placed over the top of it, one being an eagle um, that appears to have a snake within its claws. And do you know when that particular post was posted on that 44 Stebo account? I do. And when was that? I believe it was March 20th of 2022. And NetLife, in your investigation of... Um, the ABG gang, does that nut life have significance? It does. What what significance does nut life have? Nut was the nickname of Donovan Thomas, who was uh, murdered in January of 2015. Um, he was associated with the Inglewood family gangster bloods and uh, Mr. Johnson, and they have memorialized him um, oftentimes using phrases like nut life and other, other phrases. And in March 20th of 2022, had anything significant happened within this gang war in the month of March 2022? Yes, ma'am. What was that? Uh, the homicide of Shamel Drinks. Okay. Was there any other homicide that occurred that month? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, what do you want to say? Say again? May I come to the bench? I have an objection. All right, sir. <laughs>
the court's ruling um, uh, and the continuing objection, you may proceed, madam. Okay. Was there another significant event that occurred in March of 2022 as well? There was. And what was that? The homicide of Christian McMiller and Darius Ford. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 62W. And we can zoom into 62W. Looking at State's Exhibit 62W, first let me ask you, do you know whose um, neck is being photographed in this particular um, picture? I do. And who is that? It is Jasper Walters. And to your knowledge, Jasper Walters uh, affiliated with a gang? He is. What gang is he affiliated with? I'm um, also with ABG. All right. And um, is that, does his tattoo, this particular tattoo, depict Again, what you were speaking of um, last week. It does. And is there anything else significant on this tattoo? Um, along with the eagle holding the snake in its claws, um, you may not, you can. Um, above it, there's red ink, um, which says SK, which from my experience in investigations, uh, stands for slat killer. And... And when do you call um, the date that this picture was posted onto that 44 Stevo account? It was on August 26th of 2021. Now, outside of these two pictures, which were in 2021 and 2022, were, were these the only pictures that you saw of this imagery between 2015 and 2022? Objection, that's true. I'm all over the objection. No, they're not. Okay. Had you seen other images in the same capacity between that time? I did. <laughs> and the, the ones that you saw, were they only on 44 Stevo's page or were they on other um, ABG or IF Game members' pages? I'm going I'm to I'm 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 sustain that objection. <laughs> now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 72. I mean, excuse me, Defense Exhibit 72. Mr. Steele asking about this um, exhibit earlier today. I do. Um, and looking at the tweet that says OTF gang, um, when you were asked if that was a, if you knew this was a record label, you responded among other things. Do you recall that? I do. Why did you respond in that way? Um, they've also been investigated for uh, potential violations of the Street Gang Act. And also in that line of question, not on this um, exhibit, but on another exhibit, Mr. Um, still asked you about Pee Wee Longway. Do you recall that? I do. And he asked you if he was an artist or if uh, Mr. Williams had worked with that individual as an artist. Do you remember that? I do. And you also asked, you also said along with Pee Wee Longway that he was an artist among other things. Do you remember that? I do. Why did you say that? Uh, he's also been identified as a gang member. Okay. Now, on cross-examination, Mr. Steele asked you about um, Quentin Porter and whether he was a high-ranking gang member in the traditional gang. Do you remember that? I do. And your response was, you can't say that Quentin Porter was a high-ranking member in the traditional gang. Why did you say that? Uh, Mr. Porter um, was a leader in Rock Crew, and around the time when we saw traditional gang activity um, associated with Rock Crew, um, Mr. Porter was, um, based on our investigation, uh, affiliated himself with the one trade Gangster Bloods, um, not with Sex Money Murder. I don't, to my knowledge and investigation, I don't, I don't know that he was ever associated with Sex Money Murder, but I do know he associated himself with another uh, gang called the one trade Gangster Bloods. Okay. Mr. Steele also asked you about um, the Mickey on Garlington. Do you remember that? I do. And some of the nicknames that he goes by. Do you, have you ever seen Mr. Demikian on Garlington go by the name of Scarface? Um, yeah, as an Instagram handle. <laughs> and does he spell the traditional way S C A R F A C E? No, no, ma'am. How the how does his Instagram handle? How does he spell Scarface on his Instagram handle? He places the C's with an X. Right. Um, do you recall when Mr. Steele showed you, I believe it's Defense Exhibit 30, 45, which is a picture of Brian Williams? 
I'm not going to show it. Do you remember okay. him showing I, it to you? I do. And um, do you remember when Mr. Still asked you to identify gang identifiers on Mr. Um, Williams? I do. Right. Yes. And you said that that's not how you conduct your investigations. What did you mean by that? Um, we've discussed this in a variety of capacities um, over my testimony, but. Um, I see. Mr. Steele asked you about video camera systems and surveillance videos. Do you remember that? I do. In your experience with store or restaurant surveillance videos, in your experience, about how long do companies keep surveillance videos? Your Honor, that is too vague or too broad. I object. I'll sustain the question, if you want. <laughs> Have you ever had to pull um, or attempt to pull store or sub restaurant surveillance videos in your investigation? I have. And in attempting to pull those um, videos, have you ever not been able to pull videos? I have. And have you found that um, either stores or restaurants only keep surveillance videos for a period of time? Yes, typically there's you know, some limited duration of time during a store video. And in your experience, what has been a general range of when um, stores or maybe restaurants keep surveillance? Yes, general range of time. I see any questions before. Is there a time period in your experience? Um, it could be as short as 24 hours and as long as several weeks. All right, thank you. Mr. Still, actually, direct the examination about when YSL the label was incorporated. Do you remember that? I do. From your knowledge training experience, what came first? Why I sell the gang or why I sell the label? No, why I sell the gang. Now, on cross-examination, both Mr. Shar and Mr. Steele asked you several questions about gang culture and popular culture. Do you remember who did? I do. And they asked you specifically about um, whether or not athletes... Um, Maybe even other individuals have committed crimes and furtherance of the game. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I believe Mr. Steele may have asked you specifically about LeBron James. Do you remember that? I do. To your knowledge, has LeBron James ever committed any crimes in Folsom County? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. <clears throat> to your knowledge, has LeBron James committed any crimes in furtherance of the gang YSL in Folsom County, Georgia? None that I'm aware of. I believe that he also asked you about Serena Williams. Do you remember that? He did. Has Serena Williams ever committed any crimes in Folsom County, Georgia? None that I'm aware of. And has she committed any crimes in furtherance of any crip set in Folsom County, Georgia? None that I'm aware of. And have either of those individuals ever been associated with being in a gang? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Now, Mr. Steele also asked you um, questions about a variety of art forms and asked that they've came up in your investigations. Do you remember that? I do. And he asked you about authors. Do you remember that? I do. He asked you about movie actors. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was an author? Uh, no, ma'am. I don't believe I have. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was an actor? Uh, no, ma'am. I don't believe so. Then, do you recall him asking you about particular genres of music and whether or not you've investigated those genres of music? Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes, ma'am. He asked you specifically about four art forms. Country music, rock and roll music, opera music, and popular music. Do you remember that? I do. Right. I'll ask you first, have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a country music artist? Uh, no, ma'am, I haven't. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a rock and roll artist? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't believe so. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was an opera artist? Uh, no, ma'am. <laughs> Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a popular music artist? Mm. Or say pop music? Uh, no, ma'am. Now he asked you about those four genres or categories of music, so I'm going to ask you about a few others, okay? Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was an R&B artist? Uh, no, ma'am. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a jazz artist? No, ma'am.
have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a soca artist? Um, no, I haven't. Have you ever had the occasion to investigate a crime and the evidence led to a suspect who was a reggaeton artist? No, I have not. What about a reggae artist? Uh, no. What about an Afro beats artist? I haven't. In your investigations, are you investigating rappers or are you investigating crimes? Well, we're charged exclusively with, with investigating crimes. And in your experience, have you investigated a crime and that evidence led to a suspect who did rap music? I have. And they decided to confess their crimes in their rap song? I stand question. When you do your investigations, do you have other evidence outside of just music lyrics? Objection, not. Basis, Mr. Steele. Irrelevant to this I said, in the office, I'm going to overrule the objection, she said. You can answer that, sir. I'm going to the jurors with myself. I'm going to overrule that objection, too, sir. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Sure. In your experience and your training, when you have um, these cases in which rap music may come up in your investigation, do you also have other pieces of, it, of evidence in addition to any rap music or any other music? Yeah, certainly additional evidence as well. Now, do you remember a lot of questioning from Mr. Steele about whether certain videos can be promotional? I do. Okay. And do you remember a lot of questioning which Mr. Steele asked you if you knew who was actually posting to Mr. Williams' Twitter account? I do. Okay. Have you seen videos of Mr. Williams throwing up either sex money murder or blood signs that are not him in the studio or not him um, or not anyone tweeting it about it on Twitter? I have. Okay. Where did you see these videos? Uh, I've seen them on the social cam platform. Okay. And is that the social cam platform that we talked about in your initial um, direct testimony? Yes, ma'am. All right. And what year was this video created? In 2012. Is Jeffrey Williams in that video? Yes, he is. Are there other rock crew and or YSL members in that video? Yes, there are. Okay. And where is that video filmed? That video was filmed at uh, 50 Mount Zion Road Southwest. Okay. And have you had the opportunity to look at that video in preparation for your testimony today? Yes, ma'am, I have. I'm going to show you what's already been shown to the defense counsel in 62 60WA and 60W. Can you more you recognize 60W and 60WA? <laughs> I do. And how do you recognize, let's say, first 60W? Uh, these are two discs that I reviewed and initialed. <laughs> and do they appear to be, first with 60W, a fair and accurate depiction of the entirety of that video? Yes, ma'am. And does 60WA have um, portions redacted from the video? Yes, ma'am. All right. And looking at 60W, did that appear to be a fair and accurate depiction of the video that you were just referencing? Yes, ma'am. And in 60WA, does that appear to be an edited version, um, but contain mostly what's, was it 60W? Yes, ma'am, it does. Your Honor, this time the state would like to send a 60W and 60WA into evidence. Any objection? No, may we approach? You may, sir.
Consistent with the court's ruling, um, Ms. Hilton, how long is the video? About five minutes and 48 seconds. Okay, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, you good? Okay, all right, okay. All right. You may, you may, um, 60 uh, W and 60 Whiskey Alpha are admitted and may be published as you see fit. Um, it, that is where is 60 Whiskey Alpha? Well, only, yes, on yes. 60 Whiskey Alpha. Okay. Yeah. It's a real rock food movement, man. I got them pounds in on Trey. Oh, 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 Put him on my back. Talk to you little niggas, man. First play the R.O. 5, man. These bitches ain't my equal. You need to get up to this. We working. You know what I mean? We working on the block. Hey, man, where most of y'all niggas ran up with, man. My little girl got it on right now, man. I'm Trey, man. Trying to tell she got, ya. Listen, she got a car and she ain't even walking yet. And that's on Trey. Hey, you too bad. Hey, Rob, good trip, man. Look. Look. Oh, 
laugh at these niggas. I ain't got nothing on them right now, man. This bitch smoked up. You know what I'm saying? These niggas out here every day, man, hustling, man. You know what I'm saying? Slow. What you got on you right now, man? This bitch. This bitch. This bitch smoked up, right? All right. Hey, thug, thug. It's not SWM. It's nothing, baby. It's nothing. It's not rock family for life. This bitch smoked yeah. up, baby. If it's a, if it, if, nigga, if it's a fit, then, if it's a fit, then my bankroll, nigga, my mama a bitch. Hey, you heard that, nigga. It be smoke up. Big Val, like she ain't edged over them. What they thought? Break one iPhone, go to the store and get an all black one for five, six. You know what I mean? Ain't too many bitches in the city doing it, eh? Mm. They been smoked out. Ah! Got no insurance. I'm being yo, man. man. Of all this sex money money shit that's going on on this set. I mean, I'm being yo, man. Oh, she rhyme, now she can bullshit. She rhyme, now she bullshit. Look at her hell, man. Look at her hell, man. We're gonna get a room, man. See my nigga TJ, man. Hold on. 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 Okay, so we're just gonna go back and we're gonna start at 23 seconds. Crew, He says two guns up for pistol P. Is that consistent with what you discussed about the tweets in Defense Exhibit 67 and State's Exhibit 27W? Yes, ma'am, it is. Now, going to 2 minutes and 24 seconds to 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Um, who's the individual that has the red bandana in his pocket? Uh, it's Trontavia Stevens. And is there any significance with that red bandana being in his right back pocket? Sure, as we discussed, um, the blood gang members often associate their colors with the right side of their body and they wear their bandana, their gang flag, uh, in the back right pants pocket. Right. <laughs> I want to go to three minutes and nine seconds to three minutes and 18 seconds. All right, now I'm talking to me back, man. We got oh, hold on, I'll Who's that individual talking in the walkie-talkie? That's uh, Quindarius Zachary. And is that the same Quindarius Zachary that we saw in that earlier 2009 video where they were in Cleveland Avenue? Park? Yes, ma'am, it is. I want to go to three minutes and 34 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. My boy DKJ got it and he got it on him. And he got the screen up on him. DK, is that the same DK that we were speaking of um, within those tweets that's the cartel underscore DK? Yes, it is. Right. And um, we can go to four minutes and 22 seconds. If it's a fit, then my bankroll, nigga, my mama a bitch. I'm sorry, you can get go to 501. Just keep playing at 501. Hey, you heard that, nigga. It is up. Big Val, like she ain't edged over them. What they thought? Break one iPhone, go to the store and get an all black one for five, six. You know what I mean? Ain't too many bitches in the city doing it, eh? Yeah? Mm. They been smoked out. Ah! Got no insurance. 
know we be yo, dope, man. Of all this sex money money shit that's going on on this shit. I mean, I'm being yo, I'm going to be did you hear him? Was that Mr. Williams? Yes, it was. Okay. And did you hear him say, I'm the BEO of all this? I did. Have you heard that term BEO prior to this video? I have. Okay. And in your knowledge experience, what is BEO? Uh, BEO is another example of replacing the letter C with the letter B. So what they're saying is CEO, um, but they're saying BEO so as not to use the letter C. And was it BEO of this SMM shit? Yes, that's correct. And this is not a music video. It is not. I stand the objection. Does this appear to be a music video? Speculation. Still so stand the objection. And you talked about other um, individuals um, in this video. Do you know the person who was the kind of the main narrator? Did you know who? Were you familiar with that person? I am. Who was that? That's the the Montanez Stevens. Okay. And is he related to Trontavia Stevens? He is. All right. And how is he related to Trontavia Stevens? They are brothers. Okay. And did you see anyone else um, that was associated with <clears throat> SMM or Rock Crew in that video? I did. Who else? Um, in the unredacted or redacted version? In this version. In this version. Um, what are talking about? We've, I believe, mentioned Walter Murphy, Quindarius Zachary, uh, DeMontna Stevens, Trontavia Stevens, um, Jamonte Smith, um, Valerie Raven, and I believe that's everybody that was in this version along with Mr. Williams. That's all we're talking about. As far as Javonta Smith, that's the same Javonta Smith that we saw in that Trontavia Stevens video during direct examination. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes. Did you hear within this video R05? I did. And is that similar to the R05 that we saw in the tweets um, on the Young Thug Twitter account? Yes, it is. Okay. Of course, indulge us for a moment. Yes, ma'am. I have no further questions. Any recross? Good afternoon, Investigator Beltnet. Good afternoon. Um, on, on redirect, you, you talk a little bit about surveillance video, correct? I was asked, yes. Okay. So, you've been an investigator for how long? Uh, since 2012. Okay. When you are investigating an alleged crime, um, or you have a suspect, do you typically inform the suspect that you are investigating them uh, during the investigation before charges are made? Uh, it would depend on the investigation. I wouldn't say it's typical that we would. Is it uh, less than 50%? I don't, I don't know how, how to estimate that. Um, I would say more often than not, we don't um, let the suspect know. More often than not, you do not let the suspect know. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, is it fair to say that you did not let any of these individuals know uh, about your pending investigation? Any of what individuals? The individuals that are charged in, in, in this courtroom. About the investigation that was charged here? Yes, you said you were investigating people since 2009, I believe. Did you let any of these individuals know that you were investigating? Well, they knew. We, we arrested them multiple times. What they knew. I stand objection as to uh, as to instructions. Uh, as to hearsay. Uh, jury, you remember, sir, you're to disregard uh, witnesses' last statement. Okay. What else? And what I'm referring to is this RICO case. Did you personally let any of these individuals know that they were under investigation for RICO? 
Well, no. Um, I think the uh, I'm trying to make the question work, but no. Okay. No. They don't believe that we told anybody that the char RICO charges would be pending. Okay. So the answer is no. Uh, as far as I understand the question, no. Okay. Cool. Now, while you're investigating, you. Um, as an investigator, can work to collect evidence, correct? Yes. Okay. And one of the types of evidence that you can try to collect as part, as part of your investigation is surveillance video, correct? It is. Okay. And what you're saying is in the majority of your investigations, while you have the ability to search for surveillance video, the person who you were investigating would not know they're under investigation, correct? I'm not sure I understand your question. I, I understand the question. Okay, let's break it down. You said that the majority of the time, the person you're investigating does not know that you are investigating them. Well, I mean, to the extent that I know what they know, um, I mean, oftentimes the, the criminal suspect is going to be aware they committed a crime and they believe they're being investigated, but I wouldn't. I have a motion. Um, I'm going to ask you to ask the question.
gentlemen, you want to take a break? Okay. okay. <laughs> I have a sixth sense for these kind of things. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a 15-minute break, and uh, we'll go ahead and see where the afternoon leads us at that point in time, okay? All right, so we'll recess for 15 minutes. All rise. <laughs> Okay, our jury's left us for in recess for 15 minutes. <laughs>
Thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, Mr. Sharp. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. hey, please, the court. Um, investigator Belt now. So, in the, we've agreed that in the majority of cases, the investigators do not tell the suspects that they are being investigated. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You are aware of the, you've spoken about it, the Donovan Thomas case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, in, in fairness, you are not the lead investigator on that case. You never were the lead investigator on that case. That's correct. Okay. And that uh, incident occurred on January 10th of 2015, correct? Yes, it did. Where Mr. Thomas was shot. That's correct. Okay. Um, as an investigator, When you identify an important location where something may or may not have happened, you seek to obtain surveillance video of that location, correct? Uh, it, it's a very broad hypothetical. Uh, it depends on what the location is and if there's surveillance video to be had or other um, investigative potential needs. Okay, if people told you a group of individuals met up shortly after a homicide at a specific location, you would seek surveillance video of that location, correct? I may, as part of my investigation, do that. Okay. And if you were investigating that crime, or any crime, uh, you would be able to seek that surveillance video as, as soon as you learned that that location was important, correct? Uh, I sustain the objection. As an investigator, um, you would have the ability to seek out surveillance video as soon as you realize that it's a location of significance, correct? Objection, speculation. Still sustained. It's, I'm not asking. Oh. Sustained it, move on. Okay. There's no rule that investigators have to wait a certain amount of time before seeking surveillance video, is there? There's not. Okay. And you would agree that oftentimes investigators know about the existence of, a, of an investigation before anyone else does? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I stand the objection. Do you broadcast publicly when you're conducting an investigation? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes we do. 
Okay. In, in that case, Donovan Thomas case, are you aware of any public broadcasts about the investigation, who the suspects were? Um, as we've discussed, I was not the lead investigator on that case, so I can't speak to the investigation. Do you typically share information about your investigations with the public, or does that compromise an investigation, potentially? Well, um, you're, you know, you're using the word typically, and um, there are many instances where we will have surveillance images, or we may have a witness description, we may have a forensic sketch um, that we would potentially even release to the public. So there are instances where releasing information to the public can be very helpful, and other times when that information um, may be withheld to protect the integrity of an investigation. And, and I understand. If you're seeking the public's help in identifying someone or something like that, uh, you would ask the public for help, correct? Yes. Contact the media, etc. Yeah, or, or Crime Stoppers or something of that nature. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have information about an investigation within the collective knowledge of the police. Do you just spread that on the streets typically? Or do you keep the facts close to the vest? Objection, Kyle. I stand with the form. You can be praised. Do you share investigative leads and information with the public on homicides? Again, it depends on the case. Are you aware of um, sharing specific information about the McDonald's? on Cleveland Avenue being a location of significance. Do you, are you aware of the public being told about that during the investigation? Objection, Bay, what about the During the Donovan Thomas investigation. Okay, so what is the question? Are you aware of anyone sharing with the public the fact that the McDonald's on Cleveland Avenue was an, was an incident, uh, was a location of significance? Again, I was not the lead investigator on the case, so I can't testify to what was known or done in that investigation. And I'm just asking, are you aware? Again, I was not the investigator on the case. I don't have knowledge of all the aspects of the investigation. So that would be no? You're not aware? No, I, I, I'm not because I was not the lead investigator on the case. Okay. Um, but you would agree that as an investigator, anyone investigating the case and I know it wasn't you who received information about the McDonald's being important, would have the ability to seek out surveillance. Objection, speculation. I stand the objection. Hypothetically, when an investigator receives information about a location of significance, they would have opportunity to seek out surveillance, correct? Every case is different. They have different leads, different evidence, and uh, different uh, investigative priorities, and so um, it, I, I can't speak in a hypothetical to every possible situation um, or even a typical situation. Without delay? I'm sorry? Without delay. The, the police would be able to seek that out without delay. I, that's sort of a fragment of a question. What are you asking? I'll move on. Are you aware of when law enforcement, if you know, when law enforcement became aware of the McDonald's on Cleveland Avenue being of significance in the Donovan Thomas case? Objection. He said that excellent. I stand the question is to ask the answer. Mr. Short, come on, let's move on. Okay. Do you know what discovery is? Um, I know of discovery. I mean, without a, I don't know a legal definition of discovery or whatever. Discovery are police reports, correct? That's handed over to the defense. It can be part of discovery. Okay. In in videos and interviews and things of that nature. I'm so sure. I'm, I'm not aware of the legal process of discovery. I'm not a lawyer. I don't engage in that process. Okay. Um, you would agree that defendants don't receive discovery until after an indictment. Isn't that correct? Objection, speculation. I stand the objection. Okay. The 
this the Donovan Thomas incident in 2000 uh, that occurred in 2015 it wasn't indicted until 2022 was it uh, no I don't believe it was okay and it was indicted finally in 2022 uh, I'll sustain the question you can rephrase it if you can it was indicted a little over seven years after the alleged incident uh, yes okay um, and you talked about how long businesses maintain surveillance uh, how is surveillance video Are they kept on tapes, on computer systems? How, how is that done by businesses, okay. in your experience? They, I sustain. You can, re, you can rephrase, Mr. Sherman. In your experience as an investigator, when you sought out surveillance video from businesses, what form is it in? Is it in tapes, VHS, on computer systems? Could you just inform the jurors about that? It varies depending on what system a business has. OK, give me. If it varies, different forms that you've seen them in. All right. Uh, so probably in the early years of being an investigator, there were probably still some places that had some VHS tapes. Um, some may have them on a DVR. Um, some record them, depending on the business, to an off-site location, potentially stored um, closed circuit on a DVR. Um, others may use a cloud storage service of some sort as well. Um, there may be other types also. And you said in your experience, um, businesses that have surveillance may store images of past events, right? That's what we're talking about. From anywhere from a day or so to several weeks. Is that what your testimony was on redirect? It was. It could be somewhere in that time frame. And it could be longer than that too, correct? Potentially. Okay. on Cleveland Avenue stores their video? I don't. Okay. Let me ask you, 2022, on the date of this indictment, was the McDonald's on Cleveland Avenue still in business? I don't know. You don't know? Um, but you do know it was in business on January 10, 2015, right? I believe it was. Okay. Is it in business now? I don't know. Okay. Well, if you don't know, you don't know. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Steele. familiar with um, videos or music videos um, being called on the set are you familiar with that term um, I don't know if I'm familiar with I'm trying to parse your question um, the music video itself is not called on the set when, when somebody's filming something for promotion, movie, uh, video, music video. If you know it, do you know the term on the set? I've heard the phrase on the set. Um, I don't know about in the connection with the promotion, but um, in the context of filming something at a particular location. And then um, 
Are you familiar with the term bars uh, relating to a term for rap lyrics? Are you familiar with that? I am. Okay. I'd like to discuss with you what the state um, discussed with you on redirect examination. It's state's exhibit number 40WA. Mr. Atkins, can you help me with that? I can. 60 WS? What did I say? You meant the video? 60. It's 60 WA, I apologize. <coughs> Are you helping? You have school soon? Um, four, five, <clears throat> um, Your Honor, with the court's permission, may I publish um, state 60 WA at 452? Sure. Okay, thank you. Would you please listen, if you don't mind, uh, Detective, I'll orient you if you don't mind. This should be what you discussed on redirect and something to the effect of Mr. Williams stating, I think you said, and I'm the BEO of this sex money murder SHI. Remember that testimony? Yes, yes sir. And then I also want to continue it though. That's going on on this set. You know what I mean? I'm BEO, we're doing it for Pistol Pete Blatt, okay? Objection mm -hmm. characterization of set. That That's the same question. That's why I asked you to listen for, okay? And then tell me if this is right. With the court's permission, 452, if you don't mind. Thank you. Did you hear uh, Mr. Williams say what the quote I said, and I'm the BEO of this sex money murder, I'm not saying it, but SHI blank, that's going on on this set, you know what I mean, I'm the BEO, we're doing it for Pistol Pete Black. I, I did. Okay. Now. If you don't mind using um, 60WA, could you go where um, it's the original, it has the uh, wording on the Instagram post? It has what exhibit, Mr. Steele? Same exhibit. What is the post? Yeah. This was not Instagram. I'm sorry? This what in Instagram force are you referring to, Mr. So this is a video. So this, there's, are you referring to some other Instagram post? No. Okay. I'll clarify. All right. You know this, you found this on a public platform. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. And it comes with a post. Is that true? Um, this did not come with a post. It was a video. Okay. But didn't it have um, a caption to it? Uh, I believe I had a title to it. Okay, and that's at the beginning of this. Isn't that true? Your Honor, can we approach? You may.
have just a minute. We're looking for the title of the post, okay? Yes, sir. Do you by any chance remember it? We're going to show it, but do you remember it? I do. Okay. Oh. Approach, you may, sir. May of course. Will that take a moment? Continue. You may, sir. I'd like to show you what's been entered into evidence 60W. It's at all zeros, and it's just, um, it's the video, but I'm just talking about the words. And I think I said the post, but it's the title of the video. Fair to say? It is. Okay. And you see it in the lower left-hand corner, bars in the hood? I do. With it by, and then it goes into dots. You see that? Yes. Okay, and that's the title that you found. It is. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let me ask you a couple of questions. You remember in this video, you uh, pointed out that Mr. Williams um, said in 60WA he's talking about SWM. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And SWM. You would uh, agree could mean S and then 2M, sex, money, murder. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. All right. And then also two guns up, pistol peach. You remember that? I do. All right. Were you aware, were you aware that other artists before, um, well, let's, let's start here. I'm erasing that. I'm erasing those questions. I heard you say with interest that this is around 2012. This video? No, this was in two 2012. Say it again, I couldn't hear This you. was in 2012. What month? Uh, April, I believe it was April 26, 2012 when it was posted. All right, well that's, and I appreciate that. When was it made? The uh, manufacture date was not embedded within the video. So it was posted on April 26, 2012. Um, and to my knowledge of how social cam works, I don't know that you could upload a video to social cam. I think that social cam was an application by which you would record the video to the social media site. Well, and, and that's fine, but is that accurate or you're not sure? Because I, I believe that's how it works. All right, so we're talking about April 2012. Yes, sir. All right, were you aware, and I'm focused on the SWM or SMM or sex money murder, any of those um, words, and uh, Pistol Pete or Two Guns Up, Pistol Pete, okay? Yes, sir. Were you aware that prior to 2012, and I'll just say April 2012, there were other artists, musical artists, who used um, Sex, Money, Murder, SWM, SMM in their lyrics? Yes. Were you aware before April 2012 that there were other artists, known artists, who used Two Guns Up, Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete, Two Guns, something that using those words in their lyrics? Um, I don't know specifically those, those lyrics, no. Okay. You ever hear of Rocco? I have. Okay, were you aware of his song, You Gangster, Right? I don't know that song. Lyri lyrics, oh, you don't know the song at all? No, sir. All right. You aware of Naz NAS? I'm sorry? Naz NAS? Yes. Um, 2002, Brooklyn, New York, the song, Get Down? Uh, I know of it, yes. Okay, using the terms Pistol Pete. If you don't know, it's fine. I don't know the lyrics from the song, no. All right. How about Jay-Z? You ever hear of Jay-Z? Of, oh, yes. 2002, Brooklyn, New York. H-O-V-I, Javi Baby, Pistol Pete. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Are you familiar with the song? 
H-O-V-I, baby, and the lyrics, Pistol Peter in it? Um, I remember the song, but I don't remember all the lyrics. Okay, how about the gentleman we've spoken about several times, Lil Wayne, 2005, song Best Rapper Alive, singing about Pistol Pete, are you familiar? I don't know that song. All right, how about, and I'm not going to say it, but F-U, but it's spelled out uh, by 50 Cent, you know who 50 Cent is? I do. 2005, talking about sex, money, murder, two guns up, are you familiar with that? I don't remember the, that song, though. No. Okay, We Run the Streets, also 50 Cent. Don't know that one. Okay. How about the, um, the Migos? You ever hear them? I have. Okay. Out the Gym? You know that song? I don't. Okay. All right. Now, in this video of 60 WA this, I'm just saying the speaker but it's Mr. Trontavia for the jurist Mr. Trontavia Stevens brother you said right that's correct and when I say speaker I, I'm <clears throat> I don't know narrate I don't know the person who speaks the most is that fair to say it is all right now do you realize and if you need to hear it again just let us know we have the times but you remember him uh, saying something like, my girl has designer clothes, my daughter can't walk, but, I, but um, she has a car. You remember those type of lines? I do. Okay. And that is, would you agree, if his daughter can't walk, but she has a car, that's sort of like a slang? Objection, speculation. Not standing objection. Do you know whether his daughter couldn't walk actually owned a car? His young daughter? Objection, some effects on it. I stand the objection. Do you know whether this is bragging? Right. Objection, speculation. I stand the objection. Do you know whether this is accurate talk? Objection, speculation. I stand the objection. I'm asked if it's accurate talk. That wouldn't be speculation. It is. All right. Move on, please. How about, do you remember uh, the speaker talking about um, Louis V? You know what Louis V stands for? I do. And what is it? Louis Vuitton. Would you say, it, you know, in context, expensive clothing brand, fair to say? Yes. All right. And um, do you remember them talking about uh, true, true religion clothing? Yes. All right. And do you remember uh, talking about Gucci, designer and clothing, very I expensive? Do. I do. All right. Do you remember talking about shoes? Um, red bottom shoes, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Very expensive brand? Yes. All right. <clears throat> and a lot of this, there were a lot of lyrics in here too. Do you realize that? Objection, assume effects not. A objection. Do you know whether there were lyrics being quoted in that state 60 WA? No, sir, I don't. Okay. What was Mr. Williams doing immediately before? Whoever hit um, the, the uh, play on 60 WA, what was he doing immediately before? Objection, speculation. Well, if he knows, stay in the objection, Mr. Form. Do you know what Mr. Williams was doing immediately before that video? I do not. Do you know what he was doing immediately after? I do not. All right. Now. You spoke about with the district attorney on redirect examination that you have never investigated an author, a uh, movie producer, that may, that may not have been included, but um, a, a playwright, um, other types of musical artists outside of rap. You've never investigated. Do you remember those type of questions? I do. An objection is characterization of the question and the question. I stand questions to form. Do you realize that in Fulton County and in our country, the only artist lyrics that have ever been prosecuted in a criminal case is rap lyrics? Objection is speculation. I stand a question. Do you realize that? Objection. Stay in the question. Come on, Mr. Lord. Do you have an understanding of why only a music Of rap. Objection, counsel, testify. I'm the question. <laughs> Do you, can you explain, in your expert opinion, why only people 
who are involved in rap okay, lyrics okay. have so their art come into trial. I stand the question, Mr. Steele. Come on, let's move on. Now, are you familiar with a place called, just referred to as the Green Store? I'm not saying that's the correct name, but are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Uh, I know of a place called the Green Store, yes. And tell the jurors where it's located. The one uh, you're talking about. Mechanicsville. And um, do you know whether on January 10th of 2015, whether the Green Store had video store surveillance? I do not. Okay. You already were asked about that same date about the McDonald's, right? I'm sorry? You already asked about the same type of question about the McDonald's. Right? Yes, sir, I was. Both on direct, redirect by the prosecutor as well as the Honorable uh, Attorney Sharp, right? I don't believe I was asked about that on redirect. Okay. Now, hypothetically, a suspect tells you that they were at the green store and the McDonald's on January 10th of 2015. And they tell that to you within five hours of the God forbid killing of Donovan Thomas. Do you or one of your teammates go and try to get any video surveillance? Objectively, compound speculation, even if it's in a hypothetical. I sustain the question. All right, let's talk about super slimy the artwork. It's uh, Mr. Williams number 70. Okay, the picture. You're, you're tracking? I am. All right. Now, you put up on redirect examination states, and when I say you put up, you testified about states exhibit number 61W, and I believe you said that the March 20th, 2022, um, I think that's a posting, if, my, if I'm remembering. It is. Okay. And that posting had um, a superimposed emojis on it and it was the eagle holding the snake. That's how I looked at it. Is that fair to say? Yes. And that is approximately uh, is that four and a half years after October 2017? That posting? Uh, yeah, I believe roughly so. And I, I say October two, of 2017 because that's when the artwork of Super Slimy mixtape came out. You realize that? Yes, sir. So four and a half years later is when you put together the Super Slimy mixtape artwork to this supposed uh, gang arrival, right? Objection with the commentary about supposed. A standing objection. You can remove the word supposed. Can you ask me rephrase question? the question, Mr. Steele? <clears throat> Four and a half years go by before you find a post and you say it relates back to this mixtape, right? Oh no, well, we certainly saw examples uh, prior to that as well. Do you have them here? Well, we've got one right here from August 26th of 2021. Well, hold on, is that, instead of saying right here, um, is that State's Exhibit 62W? Yes, sir. We're gonna get to that in one minute. Well, it's, it's earlier than the one I previously mentioned. Um, and there were other earlier ones as well, not that are in evidence. Do you have them here? I don't have them here. All right. Let's talk about 62W, which I believe is in front of you, but the jurors saw it. But just to refresh memory, that seems to me, I'm not saying it is, but it seems to be a uh, tattoo. It is a tattoo. Okay. And um, I think you helped us understand it's, a, it's similar. It's a tattoo with an e eagle, I think, holding a snake. Is that fair to say? It is. And then it has an S and a K, a slap kill or something to that effect. Correct. On the upper right hand side, I'm not looking, but upper right hand side approximately. Is that true? That is correct. All right. And October 26th, excuse me, I'm wrong. August 26th, 2021 was when that's posted, right? Yes, sir. So that's approximately just under four years from the super slimy artwork, right? Yes. All right. Now show the jury the explicit messages that you talked about, sometimes explicit, sometimes inexplicable. 
sometimes not explicit messages um, regarding the artwork super slimy that Jeffrey Williams is threatening any gang. Objection or a mischaracterization of Detective Belknap's I stand objection. Okay. Okay, you were asked on redirect a series of questions. I just want to orient you. It was something like, these are not quotes, these are not quotes, but an arm robbery happens, a shirt's left behind, DNA is left on the shirt, and a person wrote down that they can, uh, what I call a confession. Do you remember those type of questions? I do. All right. There, you're putting together a real crime, arm robbery, that's the hypothetical asked to you by the, the district attorney, right? Uh, yes, sir. With evidence found at the scene, including a written confession and DNA, right? Uh, yes, if I recall the hypothetical correctly, yes. Relating that to what? In this case, I don't believe I was relating anything to anything. The state was asking the questions. I just want to ask you. I went through every tweet that you put up with the state. Fair to say on cross, as far as you can tell. Uh, yes, I believe so. On redirect, the state went through. Just a few, but I want to ask you about one in specific, if I can, okay? Sure. It's Mr. Williams number 61. And I'm going to orient you, but if you need if you need to see it, it's in evidence, okay? We'll see. It should be January 15, 2012, and it's uh, two, tw two tweets, supposedly from Mr. Williams. It's on his Twitter account, and it says something like... Um, they didn't pay, I'm not quoting, they didn't pay me anything and they're going to be sh shot up for real, for real, and something else about it, they're going to be beaten up. If I'm, I'm not trying to misquote it, so if we need to see it, but do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. All right. Tell the jurors, uh, through your investigation or your co-worker's investigation, who was beaten up on or around January 15, 2012. I couldn't say. Tell the jurors who or what establishment was um, um, shot up on or around January 15, 2012. I couldn't say. Your Honor, may I just a second, please? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right. May we uh, temporarily or permanently excuse uh, Investigator Belknap at this point in time? Temporarily. Excuse. Okay. Investigator Belknap, uh, thank you for your patience with us. I'm going to go ahead and temporarily excuse you as a witness. It means you're subject to being called at some other point in time. Just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. All right, councils, um, let me have a defense representative and uh, state, please.
ladies and gentlemen, uh, after consulting with counsel and taking a look at the, all of you, uh, it is my responsibility. You all look like you're a little saturated for the day. So we're going to go ahead and uh, recess for today. Um, it's just a natural stopping point. So what I'd like to do is just to go over the next you know, couple of days with you. Tomorrow, we were going to work a half a day anyway. So I'm going to just excuse you all for tomorrow. We have some other business we need to take up. And, um, and then on Monday is President's Day. So we, the county is off anyway. So we will reconvene on Tuesday morning, February 20th. Um, if you all could be here for 9 o'clock, we'll get started somewhere around 9.30ish, okay? All right. First, any minister inquire me? No objection. <laughs> you know, I'm always glad to know that there's no objection from our jurors. <laughs> yes, madam. Do you have like a gavel? I do. It's upstairs in the other courtroom. You want me to start using it? Okay, all right. Okay. Um, I do. <laughs> But I haven't used one in about 20 years. I've been a juror for a long time, and I have sought, never sought to use one. But anyways. Um, I got a question. Okay. I may have an answer. Yes, ma'am. What's your question? The question is, I'm not sure who, I guess, come in and clean up, but they ate all our snacks. I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm not sure who come and clean up or... And why are you blaming some other people? I mean, we don't know that if they, if they might take it. That place is locked in. <laughs> Anyways. So, are you, are you sure you're not eating up all the snacks? We only have a limited amount. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. We actually purchased our own. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I will... Um, I'll launch an investigation. How about that? No. All right. Okay. Um, what I'll do is um, we'll we'll see if there's some other place that or or that we can kind of do it because we do have to get we do have to clean it. So I do know people that come in and do that. They didn't even clean it. They left the popcorn huh? in the microwave with the hot sauce. Coming. All right. I have it on good authority that the snack. Thievery will cease. Okay? All right. So, um, uh, we'll, we, but we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Madam. I'd like to put um, a week or a time frame on your calendar. Spring break for public school system? <laughs> <laughs> now that I can't tell I can't tell you what you can you can put in your request but I don't know necessarily whether or not I can honor it. Just okay? put it on your radar. I'm sorry? I just would like to put it on your radar. What what dates are you looking at? We're looking at first three. First week school. Week See the, the issue with spring break is that so many all, everybody takes it different. And if I were to do that, I've had this come up with other other situations, then we'd be off for about a month because um, this period does it, this period does it, this period does it, and they all don't coincide. And there's a reason why the schools kind of stagger theirs. So I can, I, I can look at it, but I can't guarantee you that we'll be able to do anything for you of that particular nature. So yours is from the 1st to the 5th of April. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Can't say I can do anything for you about that, okay? Um, because that's therein lies the challenge, all right? Okay. Um, madam. Can you clarify the dates we're off in March, please? The 5th um, through the 12th. So we will be holding court on the 4th, and then we'll come back on the... Um, 14th. Okay? Thank you. All right. So it's Tuesday to Tuesday. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I think there's a quick, madam? Oh, no, I was just calling for speculation, but you got it. Oh, speculation? Okay, all right, okay. Remember, you can only consider what's in the four walls of this courtroom, and then I haven't instructed you on how to do anything, all right? So, all right, okay, but... <laughs> Um, all right, anybody else have any questions? Did we get the question? I know you all had inquired about your um, <coughs> remuneration. Did uh, Ms. Omana talk with you about that? No. Okay, all right. 
Um, I know that we are checking on a couple of you that came for examination and you didn't get remuneration for that day, so we are we're going to run that to ground. But uh, I can tell you that. I got this information from our jury, from our um, jury clerk, Ms. Von Kelch. Um, they pay bi-weekly on Fridays, every other Friday. So, and then they count. We, we track your attendance, of course. And then it's done in six-day increments. So it's not six calendar days. It's just six days that we are actually in session. So that's how... Um, and then after she receives a report, she's able to, to run your remuneration. Okay, so it's kind of, that helps in terms of you being able to kind of track or figure out, but if you're not, if you don't think you're paid for a day that, that's not included, let us know, we'll, we'll follow up on it, okay? All right, anybody else? Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to say thank you to begin with for your patience up front. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, we thank you for the patience you've given us thus far. You can, and you will continue to give us during the resolution of this matter. Uh, and as, as I told you earlier, the, the trial in any case is not an exact science. It's not scripted. And um, it's certainly, certainly your patience goes a long way in terms of, in terms of being flexible with us in terms of the way that um, witnesses and other things are presented. So again, thank you and continue to be patient with us as, uh, during the process. All right, for the other things that we're, since you're not going to be with us and again until Tuesday, um, remember the ad nauseum admonitions I've given you as you go home. Don't discuss the matter with any loved ones. Don't do any outside research. Don't um, look anything up on Google or any other sources uh, in order to attempt to aid your understanding in regards to what is being going on. Remember, you can only consider what's been presented in the four walls of this courtroom, and, um, and that's it would be error or it would be unacceptable for you to go ahead and do that and consider anything else that's not presented in this particular courtroom. So please do not do that. So... Um, Also, ladies and gentlemen, do not visit any of the scenes that you may have heard about. Do not cause any third parties uh, to, to talk with you about this case. Remember, if anybody should reach out to you or if you in any way should... Um, should be contacted by anybody via social media or any other modicum of communication, a mode of communication, I should say, then please go ahead and let myself or Sergeant Ingram know immediately. All right? Um, also, remember not to listen to anything on any particular site, third parties, um, that would be, that would discuss this trial in any way. Remember, that is not um, acceptable as well. So please remember that. I, ladies and gentlemen, we really appreciate you following these admonitions um, and continue to do so. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember to leave your notepads in the basket. Take a, uh, a, a sticker and um, uh, and have a uh, have a nice long weekend. We'll see you on we'll see you on Tuesday morning after President's Day. Okay. All right, so unless you have anything, say again? Nine o'clock, madam, and then we'll go ahead and get started at somewhere between 9 and 9.30, okay? So remember, you all can come early, you know, but I didn't rent the space to anybody else, and I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, um, 
and we'll check on, we'll have, uh, we have somebody we'll check on um, the cleanliness of your headquarters as well as, uh, you know, snack thieves, okay? So we'll, we'll make sure we take care of that, all right? Okay, unless you have anything else from us, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your, uh, your, your long weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday, okay? All right, all rise. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our jury has left us. Um, for those of you that did not hear for one reason or another, you didn't turn on your devices or whatever, here's what we discussed up at the bench, alright? Um, the jurors are not coming in tomorrow because on Friday, tomorrow morning, Ms. D. Williams uh, has a motion I need to take up, which all of you are welcome to certainly hear. Um, but um, I was. I think that given the motion, I'm not going to have our jurors. I mean, since we're only going to work half a day tomorrow, anyways, I'm not going to go ahead and call our jurors in. So that's what we discussed. All right. Um, anything else of me, councils? No, this time you're on. Hi, anybody? Just for clarity, you're on. Uh, Mr. Williams and everyone not affected by the motion part, they are not coming. Is that fair to say? No, I think they probably need to be here because there's, okay. yeah, so there, because there are other, some other potential Sixth Amendment issues um, that, and I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to, that since they, they won't apply to, and in fact, it shouldn't apply to anybody who is retained counsel. So if you want to excuse yourselves, that's fine. But if you are appointed counsel, anybody here fall in that category? Other than Misty Williams? No. Of course you can. Thank you. Um, you. You were planning on bringing other defendants. Only if I was going to do any other business. Okay. And I don't know, and that was the second part of my question, which I, I part of my statement. Is there anything else I need to take up? The only other issue may be, um, I believe Mr. Steele and I talked about this yesterday, is the 911 call we intend to play. Um, so that could be taken up tomorrow, depending on what time. Um, the first hearing ends, or first thing Tuesday morning. Um, the 911 call will probably be ripe sometime next week between Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. I'll just bring you everybody and we'll take that up, Mr. Steele, if we can get to it, okay? Anything you say, yes, sir. All right, okay. We need to be here in the morning at 9. I'm going to say 8:45 because you all never come on time anyway. So, but and, <laughs> so if you could be here, if everybody could be here for nine, because I believe that Miss uh, Miss D. Williams has um, uh, has has uh, the floor tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Miss D. Williams, anything, madam? Okay. All right. So we'll see everybody tomorrow morning uh, for 9 o'clock, and uh, our goal is to take up um, Ms. D. Williams' motion, as well as I'll take up anything if we get if we have enough time to take up the 911 call issue, okay? All right, if not, we're in recess. See you all in the morning, okay? All right. Okay.